Uh, allow me to lead us in a short prayer. Let's remember we're in the holy presence of our Lord. Lord Father God, as we lift up to you today the teachers, being International Teachers Day, we also would like to honor them by speaking about, Lord God, um, in health and uh, health care in the country. We ask you, Lord God, that we will act as one body, Lord, the private hospitals, the public hospitals, all government employees and officials. We ask, Lord, that we can honor not only our teachers, but uh, all our men and women in government, especially those in uniform who risk their life by, uh, at the very least, provide, providing the right uh, health insurance, health care, uh, diagnostic tests, and treatment. We lift this up to you as we ask you to make our... Um, hearing very productive, Lord Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord, that we can be one in asking for this in Jesus' name. Amen. So good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for uh, being with us today. So our, our hearing will be more of a parang technical working group of how uh, we can uh, improve more uh, field health. I, I started in government in uh, 1992. Talagang pahirapan nun pagka meron may sakit. Talagang di mo mapipiga ang sabi nga, di ba? Uh, you cannot uh, um, squeeze blood from stone, no? So, while there are so many complaints pa rin and hindi natin maiwasan, uh, I think the PhilHealth and I are here naman to also listen to complaints as well as recommendations. We have to acknowledge then na malayo na rin ang, ang narating, no? So, for my opening statement, nandito na rin yung aking questions uh, para mamaya. And then, uh, after my opening statement, ang gawin ko po, I'll acknowledge who, is, who are here. And then, mag-opening statement isang round. And then, uh, we will uh, acknowledge uh, Tony Santos, siya na magbibigay ng presentation ng PhilHealth. No? So, let me start with uh, the first Corinthians 12, 25 to 26. No? But God has put the body together giving greater honor to the parts that lacked it, so that there should be no division in the body, but that its part should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. No? So regardless of our religion, diba tayo mga Pilipino sabi ang sakit ng kalingkingan, sakit ng buong katawan. No? So although ang ating uh, jurisdiction ay GOCCs, we started with uh, SSS, a little bit with GSIS, PhilHealth, siguro isusunod natin pag-ibig. We want to see yung part na contribution ng GOCCs uh, dun sa trabaho ng gobyerno of taking care of our people. No? So before we I go with the presentation, I, I just want us, as a part of our reflection, ito si Mario na kilala ko during the pandemic and I want you to know his story. No? Can we play the video? disorder. Nung pong pandemic, eh, wala pong pandemic, eh, natutusasan ko po sa pamamasada ng tricycle. Pero po, itong pumasok pong pandemic, hindi eh, na po siya tuli-tuli na nakakainom ng gamot. Dahil napakahirap po ng biyahe. Sinosurvive ko lang po. Bibili po ako ng gamot ngayon. Bukas, hindi ako makakabili. Yung pong sakit niya, hindi po tuluyang gumagaling. Napakahirap po ng kalagaya namin. Ito nga po, mas yeah. Sige. So, yung story ni Mario, like many other tricycle drivers, no? Um, natigil yung pamamasada, pero may sakit yung asawa niya. So actually nangyari, napalayas sila sa bahay, nakitara lang sila sa bubong ng kapitbahay, but I think hindi na-capture doon sa video kasi nga binalikan lang namin siya after. As in literally buhat-buhat niya asawa niya, from hospital to hospital. Diba? But bitin yung video, hindi nakita yung part na yun. Wala yung part na yun. You sure? Okay. Anyway, uh, as in, binuhat pa niya yung, uh, yung wife niya. Ang picture of helplessness. No? And of course, we do know that it was the pandemic. Puno din yung ibang ospital. Nung kainitan pa to, wala pa itong, wala pa itong, uh, hindi ako nagkakamali, wala pang bakuna nun, no? But the point is, as we go on, 
we don't want this to happen to any Filipino. Hindi pwedeng walang matatakbuhan ang uh, Pilipino, whether it's a health center, whether it's a private or public clinic. No? And ang nagbibigay ng lakas na loob sa kanila will be their membership sa PhilHealth, which we'll go to later. Let me first recognize Senator Pia Cayetano, our uh, former uh, chairperson, longtime chairperson of the Committee on Health. And we also have our chairperson of the Committee on Health. Thank you for joining us, si Senator uh, Bongo. Senators, yeah. I'll just finish quickly the opening statement. Then, uh, kung gusto nyo mag-opening statement. No? So, next slide. So, the role of government to summarize, di ba, is to do good and prevent evil. So, ang tama ay tama at ang mali ay mali. Siguro walang mag-argue na kung sino man may sakit, uh, kailangan mapagamot, tama yon at siguro mali. Uh, marami na tayong nabago sa mali, di ba? I mean, remember again, before... Hindi mo pwedeng ilabas sa ospital pag hindi nagbabayad. Di ba? Kaya palaki ng palaki yung bill. O kaya before, uh, pwedeng tanggihan, tanggihan sa pa private kahit na life-threatening. no So although many of those issues have been resolved, still far from perfect ang ating uh, healthcare system. no So next slide. So the government is here to fill the gaps, di ba? Punuan. Kaya nga tayo mga pinuno. Dapat pinupunuan natin ang uh, mga pagkukulang. At yun po ang, aso, uh, ang ating uh, aasahan kay Attorney Eli, di ba? Na punuan ang uh, inabutan niyang PhilHealth at mga naging problema nito. And we want to see more or less kung ano ang vision for the next uh, few years, no? Okay. So next slide. Okay. So having said that, as I said, ilalagay ko na dito questions ko. Um, siguro before this slide, ang question, ilan ba talaga ang member ng PhilHealth at ilan ang hindi? Di ba? Kasi for so long, yan parate ay nababasa sa dyaryo pagdating nila sa ospital. Uh, wala naman silang ID or hindi nila alam kung miyembro sila. So we'll go to that later. But assuming they are members... Maraming pa rin tumatakbo sa mga opisina namin and that's why I invited also po yung uh, mga uh, uh, kawani ng gobyerno na uh, in the uniform services because they risk their life every day for us. But, but this is a good example, no? Uh, coronary artery bypass graft surgery. Health, 550,000 ang package. Uh, and again, sir, huh, this is much, much better than nothing kasi inabutan ko yung panahon na walang, walang feel health, di ba? Okay, having said that, heart center na siguro kilala na isa sa pinakamagaling or at least sa top three na pinakamagaling sa ating bansa, di ba? 548,000 to 764,000. Manila Medical Center, 700,000. Southern Philippine Medical Center, 610,000. St. Luke's, about 900,000. De Los Santos Medical, 8,000. 195,000. So, someone na medyo may kaya, makukuha nila yung 550 ng uh, PhilHealth at, at meron yan between 1 to 500,000 para nga mabayaran yung, uh, ano, ano, yung sa bypass. But someone na sobrang hirap, uh, saan siya tatakbo? No? So, later on siguro, kasama sa question is how do you compute ba yung age nyo? And is it meant really to be a uh, complete in, in the sense na matri-treat talaga siya for that or is it meant na talagang may, a, may aambagin din yung tao kasi pag sinabi natin zero billing ang dating talaga sa tao pagpunta niya doon wala na talaga siyang babayaran and I do understand alam mo sinabi mong 550 kung sabihin mong 50% ng lahat ng hospital sa Pilipinas tatanggapin ng 550 tapos na okay yon there will always be one or two or three hospitals that are more expensive but if you say na 70-80% na puntaan mong ospital, eh mas mahal, tapos yung 20% na pwede mong puntaan, puno, or 6 months from now pa yung, uh, yung operasyon, di ba? So, to go to next slide, you know, to, to further bolster no, no, I, uh, the point, I think uh, dialysis, especially hemodialysis, is something really felt, no? Kasi lahat ng may pasyente sa pamilya, uh, kung ano ba yan, twice or three times a week, no? And then, uh, ramdam din namin yung mga nasa gobyerno yan kasi pag nilapitan kami, ramdam ng mga hepe sa serbisyo yan dahil talagang pag absent or uh, pag masama pakiramdam. Again, sir, I'm very happy na may package na kayo dyan and uh, I know in-increase nyo uh, not so far ago from uh, number of sessions dinagdagan nyo pa. But having said that, 
ang binibigay ng PhilHealth is 2.6 per session, ang PGH is 4,000 per session, ang Philippine Heart Center is 5.7 per session, National Kidney uh, Transplant Institute, no, who really, really helps so many people pagdating sa dialysis at kidney problems is 3 to 5,000. Makati Medical Center is 4 to 5, and uh, Hemotech is 3,000. I'm not sure yung mga dialysis center kung magkano, no? kung mas malapit dyan sa, sa 2 So again, malaking tulong talaga, but uh, given that it's 2 to 3 times a week, so assuming it's 3-5 at 2-6 ibayad nyo, that's still 900 per session, so it's still not zero billing. No? So next slide. Cesarean section, so 19,000, but in PGH, it's 4-5. Uh, sorry, hindi ko nalagay dito yung fabelia, no? kasi I, I try kung saan talaga yung di ba pagka dialysis talagang tingin nila NKTI pag heart talagang sa heart center and uh, etong sa sa panganganak uh, all, although all hospitals naman yan but I, I wonder magkano sa Fabella but PGH it's 45 to 60,000 Manila Central University it's 50 to 100,000 Makati Med it's 127,000 Capital Medical Center it's 35 and De Los Santos it's 56,000 no so, medyo malayo talaga sa 19,000, no? So, yan. So, di ba, kaya nga sinesesaryan, eh. Hindi makalabas yung bata ng normal. Eh, pag nakita yung presyo, baka lalong hindi lumabas. So, I, I really want to find some answers to that later on, no? So, again, no? We are here to fill the gaps, no? Uh, ayusin yung problema, to listen to ideas, to hear uh, proposals and uh, solutions. Uh, but siguro good news naman, no? Kino-compare ko yung PhilHealth, yung binabayad dun sa ilan private, no? At least yung kalapit nyo ng presyo. Ang pinakakalapit nyo, hindi ko na nilagay yung pangalan uh, kasi hindi rin ako nagpaalam sa kanila at saka um, hindi naman, uh, I think sa internet on the research namin sa websites nila yung ibang mga benefits, no? But let's say private insurance number 3 na pinakamalapit sa PhilHealth, 14,000. Pero makikita mo, 100,000 pa rin yung coverage niya. Eh, as we showed sa PhilHealth, kung uh, bypass yun, umabot kayo ng 550,000. Kung yan ay uh, dialysis, uh, ilan na ba yung sa package nyo ngayon? Ilan sessions? 144. Or 144 times 26, no? So, na napakalaki yun, no? Ang hindi ko lang po alam, and maybe you can explain later, kasi nagtanong kami about MRI, at sinabi pag hindi inpatient, hindi covered ng PhilHealth. So, nakita kong maganda naman dito sa private insurance, Yung X-ray, lab, CT scan, MRI, kasama. Why I think it's important is because a lot of Filipinos hindi nagpapacheck up until malalana. So while it is an extra expense as the start, so for example, if PhilHealth gives free blood test every six months, uh, definitely may expense yan. Pero kung mahuhuli nyo na borderline uh, diabetic pa lang yung tao, hindi kayo gagaso sa treatment niya pag diabetic siya. Or kung nahuli nyo kaagad na yung creatinine niya ay mataas at uh, pag uh, hindi siya nagbago let's say nagte-take ng whatever no when when i visited um Soto uh, uh hospital in Cebu years ago no before pinaganda yan yung mga kwento yung ano eh yung mga nagma-migraine or masakit katawan bugbog tapos sobrang inum ng mga painkillers tapos nalaman na lang na may tama na yung kanilang uh, kidney no but as i said uh, unlike yung iba na reversible diba usually pag kidney tuloy-tuloy na yan yung pag dialysis so ang point ko uh, some of these diagnostic tests might seem like a big expense uh, but if it will save you from bigger expenses later on and especially if some are willing to partner with you. For example, if some LGUs are willing to partner na si or uh, before PhilHealth, I remember when I was a new senator, ang uh, DepEd always had about 150 to 200 million for X-ray para sa kanilang teachers. Kasi requirement yun, no? So again, we're here to find solutions, but that's something I wanted us to look into. So at isang maganda is that apples to apples, yung 14,000 na binabayad, uh, 15, 18, 21, parang mas malaki ang benefits ng PhilHealth. At that, that's siguro also one reason why uh, financially, mas hirap kayo maghanap ng model kaso dun sa iba. Dahil yung iba, for that price, less yung binibigay. Having said that, meron pong circular ang gobyerno 
na hindi tayo pwedeng hindi pwede yung ahensya kumuha ng private insurance dapat feel health and there's a little bit of a hypocrisy there i have to i have to uh, to admit kasi ang senate ang house at ang malakanyang may additional private uh, insurance and i really don't mind for employees because they're working hard at malaking tulong talaga but like for us na officials i feel guilty na meron kami meron pang executive check up uh, Samantalang ang police, ang BGMP, ang bumbero, bawal sila. So that's one of my questions later on, sir, if you're willing to explore a premium field health. Meaning whether doble yung bayad, especially for government. No? So if, for example, Quezon City, Paranaque, Tagig is willing to pay double, pero double yung benefits. Or if the national government decides anyone who's a frontliner police, uh, medical, uh, NBI, BGMP, para hindi na sila mag-private, di ba? Pero naiintindihan ko that you cannot give them more benefits kung pareho din lang ang cost na 14,000, no? But kasi sa akin, either or, kung hindi talaga magbibigay ng premium ang PhilHealth, dadating ang time na papayagan talaga natin sila na mag-second insurance ng uh, private, no? And then the last side, the last slide is just, you know, I haven't complete, completed all this data, but our, maybe Senator P and Senator Bong from the health side, no? kasi ako naman sa GOCC committee, it's really more from yung law nyo uh, and whether advantageous to privatize to or if we keep it as it is, anong kailangan sa batas nyo para makatulong sa inyo. No? So, based on a 2019 survey, 99 percent of Filipinos do not buy their prescription medicines because they are expensive or hindi nila natatapos. No? Um, there was a survey but it's quite old, di ba, na yung 6 out of 10 Filipinos die without seeing uh, a doctor. I don't know the recent yan. I, I hope nasa near zero na tayo but I, I really don't know yung uh, exacto. But what I do know is that 40 percent of all our barangays do not have a barangay health center. At cargo ng DOH yan, hindi ng PhilHealth. No, one thing Mayor Lani did in Taguig when she became mayor in 2010, lahat ng health centers sinigurado na maging PhilHealth accredited and then started building uh, super health centers. No, Ito yung may panganakan, may laboratory, at may 24-7 na doktor na PhilHealth accredited. No, So, hindi tatakbo lahat sa ospital. And that's one thing also that I wanted to discuss at the end. Maybe if the AFP, PNP, NBI, BJMP, Bureau of Fire... Uh, baka sa, ano din, no? sa Bureau of Correction din, that they want to have, rather than many hospitals, some, ano, yung, uh, yung clinic na talagang kaya yung emergency uh, and may laboratory, di ba, na PhilHealth accredited, na matatakbuhan talaga or kung usual check-ups, hindi lang nung uh, official, pero pati ng kanyang pamilya, no? So let me stop there and ask muna Senator Pia and Senator Bongo, do they want to give an opening statement? Yeah, Senator Pia? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Go ahead, please. Okay. I don't have any comment. I don't have any opening remarks. I'm just here to listen. Uh, we just had uh, the budget um, hearing of uh, PhilHealth, so i just like to read all of them and... Uh, I'm happy that you're having this separate uh, hearing because uh, it's, there, there's so much going on in field health that all the, the more information we have, the different uh, um, presentations, uh, even the ones that you presented are much welcome in understanding what the needs of field health are so that they can deliver the best kind of universal health care for the Filipinos. So we're just here to listen and support your honors. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, kami ang grateful, especially not only for the quorum, but really for partnering since you became a senator in 2004 now with the health sector, the healthcare sector. So thank you very much, Senator P. Uh, senator Bongo? So we'll get back to Senator Bongo, um, our chairperson of the Committee on Health. Um, let me acknowledge the... Para hindi na magdalawang ikot, I'll acknowledge you tapos opening statement. So, PhilHealth family, uh, led by the OIC uh, President, Attorney Eli Dino. Dino or Dino? Dino uh, Santos. Sir, you're recognized. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairperson. Uh, Honorable Senator Pia Cayetano, Honorable Senator Bongo, good afternoon. Good afternoon, fellow public servants. I, we will open our statement to address the recent issue about the fund life of PhilHealth. Our statement is that PhilHealth is here to stay. Why? Because PhilHealth is, an, is a growing concern, meaning it can meet its obligation when they become due functions without threat of closure for the foreseeable future. It will continue to meet its current plans. The fund life of PhilHealth is dependent on how we manage our income versus our expenses. For income, we have the national government subsidy, we have the contribution from PCSO and PAGCOR, we have contribution from the employed sector, as well as interest from our investment. As to the expenses, we have benefit payouts to our partner providers. We also expand our benefits under the universal healthcare law. Payout will last indefinitely so long as we are able to efficiently manage our income and expenses. It is in our hands. There is no limit in the lifespan of PhilHealth right now. Again, PhilHealth is here to stay. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairperson, Honorable Senator Pia Cayetano, and Senator Bongo. Good afternoon. Sir, thank you for that statement. It's reassuring. But uh, personally, ako, I understand. Pag hindi nyo sinabing merong pong... Uh, time lang na mauubos din ang pondo, hindi magkakandara pa ang gobyerno na dagdagan kayo ng pondo. Pag sinabi mo naman may time, eh, sa, magpapanik naman na baka mawala ang PhilHealth. So, uh, for, for any uh, uh, organization or entity handling um, uh, this kind of things, no? whether it's insurance or social protection like SSS, GSIS, etc. Uh, even sa US, di ba? It's always a balance. Eh? When do you sound the alarm bells that you do need more funds? And when do you naman assure people that uh, hindi kayo mawawala? Di ba? So, I think that should be clear to our people and uh, you know, we we should understand that it's your duty to na mga lampag. No, na you do need more funds. So having said that, the second, they're not here yet, but the Private Hospital Association of the Philippines, let me just still uh, recognize the President, uh, Dr. Jose Rene de Grano and Dr. Arturo S. Flores, uh, board member ng PAPI. Um, of course, we are very grateful for them during lalo ng pandemic, di ba? yung ating role ng private hospitals. Uh, one quick question na lang, sir, uh, kahit wala pa sila. Kamusta yung payment sa kanila? Is it more smoother ngayon or may mga complaints pa rin? Or? Sir, right now, sir, we are current in our payment. Uh, under the law, we are uh, mandated to process and pay within six days from receipt of the claims. Right now, sir, average turnaround time, meaning the number of days we pay them is 41 days, sir. Okay. So below the 60 days requirement, sir. Thank you very much. Okay. And siguro continuous naman dialogue nyo dito sa mga associations. No? That's correct, Mr. Okay. Chairperson. But feel free to use the committee no, if you need uh, a venue for dialogue nga. Uh, kaso sa nababasa sa news na hindi nagbabayad, nagbabayad, may problema. Di ba? Kasi sa dami ng inalala ng tao, uh, anything we can work out to the advantage of our people, let's do it face-to-face. Uh, -face, Pwede naman, open naman, transparent, but ibig sabihin, mas mahirap magsagutan sa media. Eh. Di ba? Mm. So, Philippine Nurses Association, Melvin Miranda, sir, uh, National President, online ba? Or, yeah, sir, you have the floor. Thank you for being with us today. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable Chair. Honorable Senator Alan Peter Cayetano, Committee on Government Corporations and Public Enterprises. To Honorable Senator Pia Cayetano, Honorable Senator Bongo, to distinguished resource persons and officials, good afternoon. Um, our opening statement is on Peel Health, the public the Filipino nurses a need to assess pill health status. Uh, pill health's mandate is to ensure affordable, acceptable, available, and accessible healthcare services for all Filipinos, including the legally mandated health insurance coverage. Those who cannot afford to pay medical services are subsidized under the law. This is more emphasized in the universal health care or UHC law where every Filipino shall be automatically included in the National Health Insurance Program 
Furthermore, every Filipino shall be granted immediately the qualification and eligibility for health uh, benefit packages. PhilHealth's financial standing is such that it continues to invite suspicion if it could ever meet its social obligations. Until now, it has failed to pay insurance claims of private hospitals for services they rendered because of COVID-19. This has a profound impact on the payments of salaries, facilities, and other hospital expenses. If there is something that needs to be overhauled, it is the way PL Health is managed and its orientation towards universal health care. As long as PL Health becomes the breeding ground for corrupt managers, then private hospitals will continue to suffer, affecting, as it does now, their critical human resources, unpaid healthcare professionals working in these hospitals, nurses, doctors, midwives, and other healthcare professionals, and who serve as frontliners will be enticed more to work abroad while leaving behind a big Filipino population in need of medical and healthcare services. The challenge is to change policies involving pill health. We propose the following as they affect not only Filipino nurses, but also their families and the Filipinos they help as a matter of duty. Number one, pill health should be generally funded by public funds. It should not be dependent on the amount of contributions that Filipino workers provide. It must be noted that PhilHealth derives its funds from 95 million direct and indirect contributors. It also recently increased the premiums to be paid by overseas Filipino workers at the most 38,400 per year. With this huge source, the drawback is that it makes Filipino uh, wary of contributing more. They believe that the amount uh, deducted from their compensation will only land on corrupt pill health managers. With little incentive, they get even with mandatory deduction. There is little source of trust in the system. Furthermore, with funding coming from a national funding appropriation, then there is equal access to health services regardless of one's status in life. Number two, the benefits provided by pill health should be expanded. The care provided by law should extend not only to the current list of benefit coverage, but also to other individual-based primary care services. Number three, there should be clear delineation of financing of public health care services among local government units, the Department of Health and the Peel Health. The situation today is that local government units must provide compensation, finance facilities, and undertake the procurement of commodities. As for the Department of Health, it can also provide the necessary human resources, staff, frontliners. However, these considerations are not included the moment PL Health charges its packages. The 2018 Mandanas ruling will certainly affect the roles of the entities, LGUs, DOH, and PL Health, as more sources will be devolved to the LGUs than PL Health. Fourth, PL Health should be mandated to make sure that its primary care benefit packages are utilized. Quality of services, sufficient number of providers, and human resources must be strictly monitored so that it will meet the increasing population coverage under the Universal Health Care Act. On the other hand, Peel Health's information campaign should be reviewed, if not vigorously supplemented by other means. To better reach out to the people, nurses, midwives, doctors, other healthcare professionals, and human resources tapped by the Department of Health and local government units should be continuously supported through incentives to properly function well and communicate to the public the need to know about pill health programs. I'll bet the challenges are many. There, these are some of the recommendations we seek to share. Our nurses are the frontliners of the healthcare system. As such, it is our mandate in the Philippine Nurses Association to assure them that their welfare, their families, and that of the public is taken care of through the channels of effective legislation. Thank you very much, Honorable Senator. President uh, Melvin, uh, thank you very much. That was very comprehensive, kahit maikli yung time. And uh, surely we'll have a discussion on those points. Let's see if my time mamaya, pero kung walang time mamaya, uh, for the budget hearing, please uh, feel free to also use my office with the recent pronouncement of President uh, Marcos that uh, dapat talaga dagdagan yung benefits ng nurses. Baka you can help us with the comparison no? sa government, sa public, but what do they also get abroad. Uh, diba? Para magkaroon ng, uh, how do I put it, 
more accountability or starting point dun sa discussion kung paano rather than generalizations lang na let's take care of our nurses, let's take care of our police, let's take care of our educators, di ba? So, we'll get back to you later. Thank you very much for that. No? Thank you. Um, kapisana ng manggagawa sa GOCCs at GFIs, uh, Kamang Fi, uh, Mr. Christopher Bautista, Chairperson. Um, sir? Uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Senator Bongo and Senator Pia Cayetano. Uh, I am representing the 36 uh, GOCCs and GFIs uh, under the Governance Commission. Uh, two things, sir, uh, that we wanted to point out uh, for this particular hearing. One is uh, the problem uh, being presented to us uh, has something to do with the representation. Uh, as we look into the Charter of PhilHealth, 17 of the members of the Board of Trustees are from the government. Only three are from the workers and one from the private sector. So I think, uh, uh, like our uh, representative from the Philippine Nurses Association, we just recommend something to the uh, corporation in which we are a member or which we own. So walang sense of ownership because... Uh, uh, kami pinapatawag lang yung mga manggagawa at the time na at the height of a problem. Second, speaking on behalf of the GOCCs and GFI workers, we contributed 315.52 billion at the height of the pandemic. So we are also frontline workers and we have contributed at a very short span of time that big amount to the government. Third, uh, we have a problem with our healthcare. Uh, as we recently received the executive order implementing the compensation plan for GOCC. So it is connected with the uh, Charter of PhilHealth because PhilHealth is mandated to set up a uh, healthcare plan for the government, uh, government uh, corporate workers. So we are waiting on the preparation of the policy that will implement. And... Uh, uh, Merong directive from the GCG to stop the existing uh, practices. Tama po kayo kanina, doon sa nabanggit, we received various uh, disallowances from COA because of that particular policy, which prohibit uh, GOC, uh, basically all the government uh, offices, including GOCCs, to uh, procure healthcare insurance from private uh, agencies and uh, we are looking at the uh, labor management relation policy na nagkaroon po sir ng uh, overlapping of uh, function because uh, the public sector labor management council which is supposed the, the entity that's supposed to govern the public sector relations uh, it seems na na ano po na encroach the governance commission yung power na yun because it listed so many things within the EO uh, signed by then President uh, Duterte, na uh, it speaks of the limitation of uh, the workers in the corporate sector. So one of that is uh, yung amin pong healthcare plan. So na limit po ito, sir. Thank you. On that last point, sir, if you're willing to be part of a technical working group, let's form a technical working group today on that EO, and they uh, immediately submit uh, our findings to the palace as well as to the commission, especially nga kung lumabas yung COA based on that, pero gitna nung taon, napakahirap. Eh. Especially kung meron ka namang kinontrata na na healthcare uh, provider, bayad na yun eh. Diba? Existing na yun for the year eh. So, um, it'll create a lot of problems. no? As to your first point as to the representation sa, sa board, that's very well taken and maybe I can ask... Uh, OIC president to consult the new board. Uh, you know, last week I was in the board meeting ng PUP and uh, hearing the student region speak, I was very happy because when I was in the student council ng UP, isa namin pinaglalaban na magkaroon nga ng student region. At naalala ko during that time, pinatarayan pa kami nung iba. Parang, estudyante kayo eh. Bakit kayo uh, nasa board? Anong pakialam nyo sa sa board? Let the administrators do it, di ba? 
then we return the question to them. So gusto nyo, kami naman ang mag-represent sa inyo, sa SSS or sa ano, sa ayaw namin. No? Ganon din kami. Bilang studyante, gusto din namin na mag-represent sa amin eh, yung nararamdaman. Having said that, if you look at the test the board, sa sobrang laki nila, eh parang committee hearing, hindi parang board hearing eh. So I was tempted to ask you, sir, whether the proposal is paliitin yung board at mas maraming representasyon ng manggagawa or palakihin na mas marami. But if it's okay with you, let's let's both have what, like sa 7 to 15 days and submit nga. Uh, kasi especially if that's an amendment to the law. But we do want to have a perfect-sized board that's well-represented. Diba? Not everyone has to be naman sa board. Eh. Pwede namang merong advisory council naman. Eh. Diba? But, I mean, did you ever hear of a private corporation na 20, 25, 30, 35 board members? Hindi. Kung meron man kayong matuturong ganun sa akin, may executive committee din sila na parang limang board members lang o tatlo na sila din ang nagpapa uh, takbo. So I'm all out for proper representation at tama yung sinabi ni Sir Bautista na yung yung ano no between the technical and government and yung manggagawa. So ang issue doon is representation, no? But my other issue nga is to make the board effective talaga. We don't want na sa papel ang ganda ng meeting nung 20. Pero actually kasi pag 20 magsalita lang bawat isa ng 3 minutes sa isang issue, isang oras na yon. So kung ani mang issue niyo that day, that 6 hours eh sa requirements din ng commission na mag-meeting kayo ng madalas. Ubos din ang oras niyo eh, no? So, so anyway, on those two points, no. So number one, let's uh, in fifteen days, kung pwede ho, na may input din kayo, ano tingin ng board nyo? Uh, ano, this is more consultative lang naman, diba? I'm not, We will not take it as the official uh, stand unless you say that this is the official stand ng board nyo. But of course, uh, manggagawa at sa nurses association and other uh, unions, if I may call it that, and. Uh, uh, people's organization, diba? if it could be your official stand, then it would help us. Naman, no? Thank you for that. So next, um, we have the Philippine Government Employees Association, PGA, uh, Miss Esperanza Ocampo and Don uh, Bo. Uh, Bo. Uh, yeah. Good afternoon. Uh, Hi, good afternoon. Uh, yes, Don please, Bo. sir. Bo -opa. Hi, sir. Don Bo, sir. Thank you, sir. Pasensya ka na kung hindi ko alam kung European, English, or Filipino pronunciation. So, Bo, yan po. Kung chairman ng PJA Legislative Committee, sir, you have the floor. Uh, thank you and good afternoon, Mr. Chair, Honorable Senator Spia Cayetano and Bongo, and distinguished resource person. Thank you for inviting the Philippine Government Employees Association in this meeting. The Philippine Government Employees Association, or PGEA, welcomes the planned review of PhilHealth Charter and relevant laws to identify possible policy reforms that will address the identified gaps or areas of improvement in the delivery of healthcare services to its members and to the Filipino people in general. As a Federation of Public Sector Employees Association, the PGEA would be honored if the distinguished senator and its committee will give PGEA an opportunity to participate in the crafting of policies that will redound to the benefit of its members. It should be noted, though, that as much as we want reforms in the delivery of healthcare services or pill health, we believe that such reforms, as much as practicable, should not result to additional burden or contribution to its members who are adversely affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. Considering that PGEA has just been informed of this plan task just a few days ago, we have preliminarily identified some areas of concern that this honorable committee may consider. In this connection, May I request the Honorable Chair to recognize my colleagues, Ms. Elizabeth Duco and Mr. Ferdinand Katukutan, to briefly discuss this point. Our President, Mrs. Esperanza Ocampo, is coming from another meeting and will try to join and catch up if you so allow. 
Thank you, Your Honor. Yes, sir. We'll recognize them. And that's precisely why ang ating pong mga association ay invited today. Kasi minsan pag statistics ang pinag-uusapan, you know, uh, para bang everything is well, eh, di ba? Pero pag uh, katulad nung ni Mario kanina na tricycle driver, when we go to specifics, di ba, ng mga membro nyo, na may karanasan nga talaga sa hindi makabayad, hindi matreat, or hindi makapag-MRI, or hindi makuha yung bypass, dito pumapasok talaga yung ano eh yung yung uh, how do I put it impetus natin that we we have to do better no so sir may magsasalita pa from your side right now we'll recognize them yes, yes sir yes sir. Uh, ah, okay yes sir yes. Uh, senator Cayetano uh, magandang hapon po at maraming salamat na nabigyan niyo po kami ng pagkakataon na ito Uh, magandang hapon din po sa um, ating uh, magigiting na Senador, uh, Senadora Pia Cayetano at si Senador uh, Bongo at sa mga kasamahang kong manggagawa sa publiko. Uh, we at PGA had outlined seven points that needs to be uh, acted upon or looked upon. Number one, the benefit. Number two, the contribution. Three, fund management and investment. Four, accreditation. Five, service delivery. Six, structure and organization. And the last one is to amend field health chapter. Sa number one po sa benefit, may mga na napansin po kami. Ang unang-una po ay ang kakulangan ng pagsasagawa ng pagsalaganap ng uh, ang PhilHealth package na PhilHealth konsulta. Napakaganda po itong ginawa nyo. Ito ay isang bagong package na konsultasyon na sulit at tama. Ngunit ang problema po ay sa baba, sa mga rank and file at sa community, ay hindi po sila aware, leading to non-availment of the package or low utilization. Ang pangalawa din naman po under benefit ay sana po meron po pagkasama-sama or pooling of government agency fund budgeted for annual medical checkup of government employees. Narinig din na rin po kanina at kayo na rin po nagsabi, uh, Honorable Chairman, na ang mga, mga manggagawa ay nagpukuha pa po ng ibang health card. Ay ito na naman ay isang pasakit sa mga bulsa ng mga manggagawa. Ang pangatlo naman po under benefits ay ang implement to implement the field health plus. Uh, dati po may mga studies na po ang field health at itong mga studies na to ay found out to be beneficial for the members. Yung field health plus. It can maximize government offices budget on additional outpatient medical benefits. This can be used to expand outpatient benefits. Ang apat naman po under benefits is para nga lumawak po ang ating outpatient benefit eh may isama po ang uh, rehabilitation treatment or intervention. Uh, and we all very know uh, that the most common uh, occupational hazard would be the low back pain caused by uh, proper body mechanics at mga arthritis sa likod. Uh, at dumadami na po ang nangangailangan ng treatment ng rehabilitation na, and, at, at iba pang outpatient care na hindi po covered sa mga existing benefit packages. And fifth for the benefits, could be the non-availment of benefits due to problems of ill health on delay or non-payment to hospitals and doctors where patients suffer, especially during the pandemic. Totoo po ito at marami pong umiyak, marami pong kinuha ni Lord dahil hindi po natanggap sa mga ospital maski membro po yung manggagawa. Kasi ang sabi ay hindi pa po sila nababayaran ng PhilHealth. 
At ito po ay kaawa-awang sitwasyon at alam po natin, ayaw na ayaw po natin mangyari ito ulit. At sana ma-review po ito. Ang isa pa pong uh, punto namin na gustong isabihin ay accreditation of hospitals and doctors should be reviewed. Automatic non-accreditation of providers with pending cases of abuse. Accreditation fees charged across to doctors based on percent of income need, need to be reviewed. They should consider the amount of field health pay or remit to doctors. Most outpatient doctors receive minimal payment from field health. Ang panglima pong nasa bullet namin ay service delivery. Ang gusto po namin iparating dito ay sana meron pong uh, 24 hours public assistance na ma-implement, quick provisions of requested documents and feedbacks within the day, implement as results-oriented IECs, at uh, isasama na rin po natin dito at ia-align natin sa universal health care na dapat it's a whole of society and whole of government Isama po natin ang accreditation of non-hospital-based health facilities na ma-accredit po sila. Ang, 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 ang susunod po namin gustong iparating ay ang struktura at ang organisasyon ng PhilHealth. Consider lean but efficient structure. Some functions can be devolved to LGUs or DOH regional offices, and some can be streamlined to other government offices with expertise, especially on investment and fund management. At isa pa po ay to amend field health chapter, members, fund owners should be provided with full education. There is a need to conduct orientation, study the law and other field health related laws, including updates on field health overall operations. Um, katawagin ko rin po yung aming kasama sa kanilang dalawang punto pong sasabihin. Kasama... Man, right before that, uh, ang naganda po ng punto niyo, but may isang punto pwede na nating sagot right now. So uh, as far as the public uh, assistance, May sistema na ba ngayon? So, for example, no, may, uh, I think ang concern ngayon is sa government. No? So, may isang government employee, uh, let's say police, di ba? Nasaksak na barrel sa ospital, uh, may problema. So, inasikaso naman ng ospital, pero, di ba, hiningan na halimbawa ng, uh, who, who do they call? And an ano bang assistance base natin? Is it based sa hospital, nasa malasakit center ba to, or meron tayong call center ba? Anyone from the Philal family can can answer. Mr. Chairperson, uh, at present we have the action, a call action center, meaning any 24 hours, any member, any uh, patient can call that and ask about PhilHealth. So it's a 24-hour operation. Uh, the number can be found can be found in our PhilHealth website. It's easily available. We also have these uh, P cares. Cares are nurses that are assigned in hospitals, and their duty is to facilitate uh, the patients, help the patients when they have questions on field health availment, field health benefits, and processes concerning field health. So we have these uh, two programs, uh, Mr. Chairperson. So that we don't um, argue whether it's effective or not. With your permission, magbuo tayo ng isa din technical working group with the associations. Yes, let's simulate it. Diba? So let's let's say na nasa Paranaque yung isang pasyente, nasa Tawi-Tawi yung isa, nasa Baguio yung isa, may nangyari. And with your representative, either tatawagan nila doon or kung may empleyado sila na nandun. Diba? So kung nag-earthquake drill naman tayo, mag-feel health drill tayo, uh, not for the purpose of pointing fingers but to see nga whether effective at kung kulang, eh, paano punuan yung, yung sistema? Ha? Kasi, eh, bottom line dito is simple lang eh. Pag nakuha nung humihingi ng assistance yung assistance, pasado tayo. 
pag umikot-ikot sila at hindi nila makuha, hindi tayo pasado, di ba? So, that, so we don't argue here. Kasi, di ba, we can present cases that didn't work. You can answer na most of it works. Yun ang problema ko sa statistics, eh. It doesn't always show what's really happening on the ground. But of course, it's numbers. So you can't also argue with it, no? So, ma'am, kung payag ka uh, at yung uh, mga asosasyon, di ba, we, we'll do a simulation, di ba, na nabiglaan na without warning to those group. But together with... Uh, with PhilHealth para hindi parang our word against their word or their word against our word. Na. Na. Tapos ma'am, paki-introduce yung uh, colleague nyo na magbibigay ng two points. Yes, thank you, um, Honorable Chairman. Uh, can we call po yung kasamahan namin sa union ng mga empleyado sa National Treasury? Sir uh, Rainier, you can have the floor. Yes, good uh, Thank you, ma'am. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Chairperson Senator Alad Peter Cayetano, Senator Bongo and Pia Cayetano. Magandang hapon po at magandang hapon din po sa ating lahat. So, uh, again, PGA is here to support the plant policy reforms necessary to strengthen the delivery of field health services, including its health benefit packages available for, for all government personnel and their dependents. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, one, just one point for consideration. One possible impact of an increased coverage of field health benefits would be an increase or increased contribution of the members as it may possibly need additional funding on the part of the field health. Now, in case members' contribution will be increased, uh, for example, from 1,500 to 2,000, the problem there is, uh, can the government workers afford such increase or additional premium based purely on their current net take-home pay? So the only thing, Mr. Chair, that we are worried of is the probability of increasing the employee contribution as part of the program uh, on policy reforms. So maybe, Mr. Chair, one measure is to increase the sources of income due to field health, like the share in the excise taxes on tobacco and liquor based on the sin tax law. And of course, the counterpart, counterpart funding of the national government from other sources. From there, Mr. Chair, we may no longer need to resort to an increase in premium payments on the part of government workers. So. Uh, having said that, we recommend that this matter be also taken into consideration in the formulation of the reforms being planned, Mr. Chair. Maraming salamat po. So, very well taken and I understand, no? At ang, uh, just to clarify yung binabanggit ko kanina, those who are already getting a second or another healthcare provider na private. So whether GOCC yan or kung ngayon hindi na pinapayagan, Senate, House, Malacanang, or whether in their individual capacity. So for example, sa PNP, siguro kung may konting pera yung general, baka kumuha na rin siya for his family. So ang point ko lang naman, kung ang PhilHealth meron premium kaso sa magdalawa, makakatulong din to sa PhilHealth. But you raised good points about uh, yung income, yung share nila sa sin taxes, and of course, yun nga, sa ordinaring manggagawa, hindi rin sila pwedeng maiwan. Uh, ang pinupunto ko lang talaga is two things. No? Number one, there are government employees who are more vulnerable than others. Diba? Um, in fact, some of them, ang problema are not considered government workers. Uh, example dyan is barangay health uh, workers. Dahil allowance lang sila or JO, uh, hindi sila under GSIS at hindi sila considered government. So, hindi sila automatic na binabayaran ng uh, LGU sa PhilHealth. Pwede ba silang, volunta Pwede silang voluntary, no? Oo, di ba? Yeah. Unlike sa GSIS, hindi sila pwedeng voluntary. So, ang ginagawa ng LGUs, sa SSS sila pinapasok kasi hindi sila sakop ng GSIS, no? So, the, the second point that I... Uh, uh, wanted to make nga is that rather than mapunta sila sa private uh, because nga, iba-iba yung regulasyon natin, di ba? So, parang nagkakaroon ng VIP system sa gobyerno that there are some offices that allowed na kumuha ng health insurance, yung iba hindi. 
at wag po kayo maiinggit sa Senate at sa House kasi ang solusyon is hindi tanggalin dun sa mga meron kung hindi paano pagandahin yung wala. ba? Diba? So, b- before, kinosyon na ako na wag sabihin na some offices, let's say ambassadors, are getting better pay. Kasi ako hindi naman solusyon na ibaba yung pay nila. Ang solusyon, itaas din yung sa iba. No? So, thank you very much, uh, uh, PGEA. And we do now have uh, Dr. Grano of the Private Hospitals Association. Sir, before you went online, um, yun na, nabanggit na rin po ng Philippine Nurses Association yung delay sa payment sa, sa private hospitals and uh, we expressed our gratitude sa lahat ng private hospitals, especially during this uh, pandemic, sa lahat ng sakripisyon nyo. And uh, of course, bago yung mga official natin sa PhilHealth, but we want to get a sense then na uh, Uh, are we moving forward? Mas maganda na ba ngayon yung singilan? Uh, or sobra pa rin po ba ang delay? Uh, because na-articulate po ng, uh, ni Head na ni President Miranda that any delay in the payment, delay din yung sweldo ng mga doctors, nurses, at even yung mga janitor, security guards sa mga hospitals. So sir, uh, sa inyo ang floor for any statement and an opening statement po sir. And any issues sir? Thank you po, uh, Honorable Chair and uh, the Honorable other Senator, Senator Bongo and Senator Cayetano. Uh, good afternoon po and also to our friends from PNA. Thank you very much for uh, giving out the list of our concerns. Pareho po tayo ng ating mga concerns. And uh, para huwag na po tayong masyadong humapa, thank you na ibigay po ninyo ang mga concerns ng ating mga healthcare workers. Uh, siguro po, doon po sa ibang kagrupo din natin na nandito, uh, maraming salamat po. And good afternoon. Uh, yun lang po siguro ang isang concern namin is of course uh, more on the review of the quasi-judicial powers of uh, the pill health no right now yung po ang medyo concern namin because uh, for us they are the accuser the prosecutor the judge and the uh, uh, executioner at the same time kaya medyo parang uh, nawawalan kami ng powers na uh, are they even uh, under the laws or regulations of the land i mean uh, of the different uh, agencies not even you know and then another concern po siguro namin right now is uh of course yung uh, being the biggest uh, insurance group in, in the country or organization in the country uh, are they even under the power and control of the insurance commission mukhang uh, i think when they were asked they were saying that Uh, they're not even under the 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 powers of the uh, uh, insurance commissioner. And then, of course, the, answering your uh, question, uh, uh, Your Honor, yes, uh, slowly we are being paid by our partners, uh, Attorney Eli and Mr. Bacaresa. I can see you there present. Ano? Thank you very much po dun sa mga tulong nyo sa, sa mga hospitals natin. Although, hindi pa po uh, lahat nababayaran ng ating uh, pill health but uh, they're I think trying to pay us slowly and so yun lang po siguro uh, we are expecting na sana ay madagdagan pa yung mga reimbursement claims namin na uh, still uh, nandun po sa kanila. Yun lang po and okay. thank you very much. Your Honor. Thank you for the sir and we will take that up one by one. So lahat yung points ng ating mga resource persons kayo will be listed tapos isama-sama natin. Yung kaya sir gawin sa isang technical working group para mas mabilis gagawin natin. But maybe ano sa next board meeting nyo uh, sir Tony Santos, you can take that up na ano bang maluwag to everyone na yun nga kasi you, you can't really be the accuser the judge and the implementer nung, uh, nung penalty in one During that time po, at ito po yung binabanggit ng mga asosasyon, yung pong uh, mga anomalya sa PhilHealth, uh, I think I was speaker when we had the hearings. <clears throat> yung two cents ko doon, sir, uh, doctor, was something like this. Kung halimbawa yung isang ospital may gumawa ng kalukuhan, tapos hinold mo yung payment, lahat na nung pasyente at buong ospital na nagsasuffer. 
Pero kung kasuhan nyo na lang kung sinong gumawa nun, so it's, it's different kasi kung yung fraud was perpetrated by the organization, by that whole hospital. Diba? And it's different if there was one or two people there. So for example, if you have one or two people in X hospital na nagpepeke ng bypass, you know, open, close, diba? at sinuspend nyo yung programa, eh paano kung sampu yung... Uh, doktor doon, yung heart doctors, at isa lang ang involved. E di yung siyam at yung pasyente niya, apektado na lahat. So I think this is where yung sinasabi din ni Doc na sino yung accuser, sino yung uh, judge, etc. But of course, sir, I think we all also don't want na yung halimbawa mapunta sa korte tapos umabot to ng limang taon, anim na taon. Bago na yung administrasyon, wala rin mangyayari doon. No? So maybe together we can find a way nga na ano ba yung best. So kung meron kayong report na may anomalya, so kung kayo din yung accuser or you appoint someone who will accuse, sino yung tribunal na, na uh, what you call this, na impartial? It doesn't have to be one person. It could be one representative from PhilHealth, one from the private hospitals, and one neutral person. Parang dun sa... Um, pagka ginagawa yung arbitration no? it could be arbitration style. I mean, abogado naman sa yung ating bagong OIC so it could be more arbitration style rather than uh, or more small claim style diba? rather than a full-blown hearing but, but I think that's a good issue to to address and again, there's no perfect solution but we can have a pilot on that no? but I, I want it to be a board decision from your or board recommendation para maluwag din sa inyo. Then we will go to the uh, associations, di ba? Whether sa manggagawa or sa private hospital, kung acceptable din sa kanila, then we can have pilot projects about it, di ba? Kasi kung hindi, ganun din eh. Tatagal, we'll accuse each other, then naabot din sa korte, then kaharap naman na, I mean, it's unfair for us to accuse you of something that people five years ago did. But on the other hand, hindi na namin sila madala dito. Kayo na yung, yung kaharap, di ba? So any kind of adjudication that can be done very quickly and decisively, uh, yung matatalo dyan will always, you know, not accept it. But as long as fair and transparent and uh, very decisive, ibig sabihin, mabilis yung decision-making, why not, di ba? So again, to my statement kanina, kung sasabihin mo, sususpindihin mo kasi program nila, pero five days lang, halimbawa, o three days, kasi mag-hearing ka agad at isang hearing tapos yan, I don't think aangal yung ospital. Pero kung masususpend, for let's say six months, ang tumatawag sa amin, actually, hindi naman yung doktor eh. Hindi, hindi rin yung may-ari basta nung ospital eh. Ang tumatawag din yung mga pasyente din eh. Di ba? Na, kasi nga, wala na silang... And there are places that isang ospital lang ang credited sa kanila. Hindi naman parang Metro Manila ang lahat na pag nasuspend yung isang dialysis center or nasuspend yung isang ospital, marami kang ibang tatakbuhan. No? Am I correct there, sir? Doctor? No? Yeah. May mga lugar yeah, yeah, yeah. na limited yung hospital talaga at saka yung beds dun sa hospital. Eh, no? No? Yes. yes. Sige. Thank you, sir. Anything else, sir? No. Yun lang po. Thank okay. you for your honor. So now we go to the PNP. Kasama po natin si Brigadier General Robert uh, Rodriguez, Directorate for Personal Records and Management, DPRM. Yes, sir. Uh, to the Chairman, uh, Honorable Senator Alan Peter Cayetano, to uh, Honorable uh, Senator Pia Cayetano and uh, Senator Bongo. Uh, with me, sir, is uh, Police Colonel uh, Jezebel uh, Medina, the Director of the Health Service, and also Police Colonel Richard Redo, the Chief PNP General Hospital in Camp Crame. Uh, in behalf, sir, of the uh, Philippine National Police, uh, we would like to thank the good chairman for inviting us as resource person and uh, the uh, 227,000 strong uh, PNP organization who are all members of the uh, uh, PhilHealth are looking forward for a more reliable convenient and efficient delivery of services by the uh, uh, female in as much as uh, just like in all uniform services, 
our job is risk and very stressful. Uh, so, uh, marami po sa mga pulis natin, sir, ang mga sakit ay dulot ng stress. Uh, diabetes, uh, uh, sakit sa puso, and uh, it, we, we are uh, always uh, uh, looking the uh, 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 the 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 financial uh, requirement of this uh, sickness. Uh, so uh, that's all, sir, for the sir, PNP. Quick Thank question. You, sir. So, do you agree, sir, with the assessment? Na at at least the PNP side, no, na malaking tulong ang PhilHealth pero kulang talaga. Sorry, yes, sir. So right now, po, pagka meron pong wag na yung general health, no, yung lang halimbawa po in action, halimbawa na na barrel, na saksak or uh, may sumabog na bomba, no. Um, our PNP personnel feel free to rush them to the nearest hospital or nandun pa rin sa isip uh, na sa yung mas murang hospital na pagdadalan sa kanila. Ah, hindi na sir, uh, kasi uh, we have also this. Uh system in the PNP where we reimburse uh, hospital expenses, especially of combat uh, injuries. Mm -hmm. uh, we uh, uh, reimburse the whole amount that they spend in the hospital. So, kahit saan, sir? From PNP funds yun, sir, no? Yes, sir. Yes, so, sir. over and above yung kaya ng... Nang... Nang sasagutin ng ano, nasasagutin ng PhilHealth. Yes, sir. Yes, over sir. and above, sir. So, let's say if it's a gunshot wound and... Sabi ng PhilHealth, they'll pay for 50,000, pero yung bill is 100,000. PNP will pay for the 50,000. Yes, sir. For combat uh, injuries, sir, and for uh, ordinary uh, 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 health uh, problems, maximum of 100,000, sir. Uh, so sa general health po, hindi? Yes, sir. So, so for example, sir, ayun nga, let's use the yung bypass, no? Kasi stressful talaga. Hindi lang stressful uh, mentally but and emotionally, but physically stressful yung inyong... Uh, trabaho. Kasi unang-una, hindi kompleto tulog nyo. Because you're in duty 24-7. Eh. Diba? Many people don't realize na kahit nasa bahay kayo, hindi ka na kayo na yung porme, uh, nakabakasyon kayo, kung alam kayong polis kayo, you have to respond. Eh. Diba? So assuming, let's say, ang abutan niyang hospital, kailangan ng emergency na iba-bypass, let's say, 850,000, pero 550 yung allowed ng PhilHealth, you'll give them an additional 100. Tama po ba? Yes, sir. Additional line in the combat. Kahit oh. hindi. Basta hindi combat, sir. Oh. Maximum of 100. 100. So, may yeah. kulang pa rin, assuming yes, sir, in that no, example no. na 850 yung... Yes, sir. Kulang pa rin, sir. Ang... Oh. Uh, about, sir, dahil nandito na rin yung resource persons, di ba? Uh, so, are, ila, ilan na ba ang ano? hospital o clinics ng PNP and are they all PhilHealth uh, accredited na? In Comprom, sir. In PNPGH, sir. And in Cebu, Dabao, we have uh, 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 primary level hospital, sir. And in, in Camp Karami, sir, dun, dun po talaga yung hospital po ng, ng PNP, sir. Cebu, Dabao po, sir, naka PhilHealth accredited na rin or in process? Sir, excuse me. Sir, good afternoon. Yes. Uh, all our, our regional medical and dental units uh, uh, some are accredited but infirmary level. Uh, we have uh, in Cebu and uh, in Davao, there are hospitals, po, sir. So we have only one level two hospital, which is in Camp Crame, sir. Because I remember nung SAF 44, di ba, bumisita ako doon. At that time, wala kayong CT scan, MRI. But I remember President Duterte, I think, put some money in, no? But Meron kayong CT scan sa Krame? As of now, sir, wala pa po. Sir. Wala pa rin. Uh, MRI? Yes, sir. Para, pero po, sir, uh, pinap, pinaplano na po kasama na po sa program. Binawas mo na ang ko lang, diba? But, di ba, meron kayong programa sa na pagka ginagamit yung PhilHealth, you also give equipment? Wala na yon, Wala na yon. Nung umpisa ng PhilHealth, may ganang kayong programa eh, na pagka kinocompute niyo yung use, uh, ano pa, Uh, wala, wala na ngayon yun. So purely you're dependent on either the DOH budget or the PMP budget for those equipment? 
Yeah. Bigyan niyo yung list. Tama-tama kasi budget hearing. But sir, baka pwedeng may assign din ng PhilHealth sa PNP at AFP and other uniform. I-assess niyo na yung kanilang facilities at ibigay niyo kung anong equipment. Pa isang isang birahan na lang sa budget hearing kung kaya rin lang naman. Di ba? Ganun din naman eh. Kasi kung kailangan, alimbawa sa krame, eh, kung kailangan nila ng MRI o ng CT scan, dadalhin pa nila yung pasyente kung saan. Sisingilin din naman sa ano eh. Sa PhilHealth eh. So, mas mura pang ang doon na lang talaga meron, no? no? Of course, meron din na yung construction, no? Dahil yung, yung specialized yung rooms for those, eh, no? no? Hmm. Well, can we do that, sir? Can we assign someone to them and parang do a joint assessment na? Yes, sir. We will uh, we will do that, sir. We will assign uh, PhilHealth personnel to coordinate with them. Uh, in fact, sir, we took the opportunity uh, before this hearing to coordinated our partners in PNP and Philippine Army to address the issues regarding PhilHealth. Mr. Sir, sir, Minson, sir, ang attitude sa Pilipinas, pag may checklist, imbis na tulungan sila, parang pabalik-balik ay, kulang, wala kayo nito, wala ang ito. But wala naman sa batas nagsasabing hindi pwedeng magtulungan para fill upan yung requirements na yun. Uh, para nga maayos, di ba? Especially when we talk about uniform uh, personnel, no? So maybe this could be a something we can do quickly and together considering na the bycam will probably be mid or late November. So we have like a month, no? If in this month at least yung pinaka-basic na feasible, no? Na equipment at saka yung mga kailangan sa accreditation, kung malagyan na natin ng pera, uh, while it's true that some of them will need construction, just because we put it on the budget naman, that doesn't mean na January, February, ma-order nyo na eh. To procure, i, di ba? Ibibid nyo pa yan. It takes also time eh. So, for me, and I think there's a COA, ano na, hindi nyo pwedeng i-bid yung structure together with the equipment. Hiwalay din naman ang pag-procure nyo yan eh. Di ba? So meaning walang, assuming you need additional facilities in some of these areas, uh, pwede mo naman isabay yung bidding or mauna ng konti yung construction and then pagdating ng equipment, basta naman hindi masira kung ginagawa pa yung facilities. Eh, di ba? Uh -huh. Go ahead, sir. Well, sir uh, the PNP is now building two uh, level three hospitals. One in uh, Bikutan, in, in CRPO, sir. Tagig. Uh, with a 200 bed capacity and uh, one in uh, Panopio, sir, in Quezon City, uh, Cubao, Quezon City, sir, uh, with a 300 bed capacity. Included na po dun, sir, yung mga, mga gamit, which uh, I think parang na for bidding. Yes, sir. Uh, na ang delivery is after two years, okay. pa, sir. So, yeah, so let's work together. And I think that's a better plan, no? Kasi nga, mas madali pag yung hospital is planned from the ground rather than kapag ka may building na binigay and then we we adjust it na. So, uh, to our colonels, meron po pang gustong idagdag or is there any request? Sir, uh, actually we talked with the with the PhilHealth a while ago that our way forward for the PNP at the regional levels is just uh, the, the laboratory, basic laboratory with the X-ray and the consultation. Yung parang ginawa po ni Sir Mayor yeah. sa para niya. That, I think that's the best for us because ang mga kampo naman namin sa PNP is within the urban areas. So, pwede po yung uh, referral to the DOH yeah. hospitals. Actually, kung ayaw natin maniwala sa mga doktor, kahit mga mekaniko ang ating i-consulta, di ba? Kasi walang mekaniko na hindi magsasabi sa yung i-check nyo yung brake fluid, i-check nyo yung oil, i-check nyo kung yung ano, di ba? Pero tayo, hindi pa pinilit, hindi pa gagawin yung every six months na blood test, yung every year na x-ray. No, but ako, I'd like to encourage that talaga. And if there's uh, kulang ng funds, I'd like to uh, be a part of helping you secure that. Kasi yung sa blood test lang, marami ka na malalaman ka agad eh. Di ba yung liver, kidney functions mo, yung cholesterol, yung uh, sugar, di ba? Uh, so, pero pag hindi mo alam yan, and then pag sumama na pakiramdam mo, saka mo tignan, actually, yun yung sinasabi ko kanina, sir, mas malaki pang gasto sa, sa field health eventually. I mean, dialysis is a good, uh, ano dyan, is a good, uh, and, and ano, diabetes, di ba? 
Marami kasi hindi nilalam nung pag borderline na, eh, na mag lifestyle change uh, uh, sila. Eh, no? Thank you very much, sir, for that. No? Um, but that's precisely why I like face to face and committee hearings. Kasi it's not only what's done formally, but what's done informally. Yung magkakilala at saka yung mag exchange ng numbers para madali nga magtawagan na lang. Sir, uh, regarding doon sa dalawang hospital namin, sir, as of now, sir, nagkaroon na ng joint uh, ang Congress and Senate, yung uh, House, sir, tsaka Senate on the reorganization of the PNP. Our problem now is the two hospitals that we are building, ang, ang structure po ng health service namin is not, is not good enough na iman yung dalawang malalaking hospital na ito, sir. And uh, as of now, sir, nag-joint uh, resolution na tayong yung House and uh, yung Senate doon sa reorg ng PNP, sir. So, I just hope, sir, na baka matulungan sige kami pa, ng sige good, pa, uh, the honorable yeah. senators. And maybe you can take a look at how yung mga katulad ng Lung Center, uh, um, NKTI, Heart Center, yung board nila. Diba? Ta tama ho kayo doon. Uh, uh, building it and running it are two different uh, things talaga. Akala ko, sasabihin mo, building permit, eh, <laughs> Ipaabot ko lang sa ating mal na mayor pero <laughs> Okay, so the next is the sa AFP, we have uh, Colonel Jonah Dalagit, chief ng Viluna. Yes sir. Sir good chairperson uh, Senator Alan Peter Cayetano online or Senator Pia Cayetano and Senator Bongo good afternoon including the resource person present around. Uh, sir, I've been working in the military treatment facilities from the Visayas, Mindanao, and here in Manila for almost 25 years. And I saw a lot of battle casualties. And I also saw how few had helped us. But the number of hospitals stay, that is 45 days for battle casualties from the start of the operation up to the time of recuperation is not enough. So I guess there should be provision to extend the number of hospital days for battle casualties. Sir. And then... In a government hospital or any hospital with that matter, we are required by the Department of Health to admit indigent patients, about 10%. So in AFP Medical Center, I saw the package of um, about sepsis with chronic disease that is 22,400 only, and we incur about 1 million. So we shoulder the almost... 900,000 no balance bill with a hospital that is supposedly allocated for uniform personnel. And one is, I was just brought it during pandemic because we open a lot of uh, isolation facilities. So we lack this personnel to man and our administrative was lack of um, personnel to do the papers. So we have a lot of um, claims that is denied because the number of um, allocated allocated for the PHI is only six days, although we give us 120 days, so it's not yet enough to um, reconsider the documents or the charts, the patient that are claimed, uh, are claimed for PHI. So we appeal that. For reconsideration, we were given enough time to reprocess to the unclaimed field health um, documents. Sige, ma'am. So let's work on that. Uh, I would ask Attorney Santos after the presentation, kung paano nga kinocompute yung sa packages? Kasi, again, nakita natin 22,000, 1 million. And secondly, tama po kayo, ma'am, kasi di ba, if you watch the movies about uh, especially Western military, uh, pati yung rehab nila, alagang-alaga yes. talaga. More ang nagiging problema nila pag veterano na. Di ba? Na hanggang saan ang kanilang life insurance at saka health insurance. Pero while active duty sila, lalo kung uh, in the line of duty ang kanilang uh, injuries, di ba? pati yung rehab nila, uh, sagot ito, whether they're inside the hospital or outside na. In fact, yung iba hatid sundo pa kasi nga, uh, well, we, we have the benefit of having family. Yes. ba? But we should not also abuse that. Ibig sabihin, may expense din talaga iyon. But ma'am, same question sa PNP. Ilan na ba ang facilities ng... Ah, sorry. So you're with Viluna, no? Yes. Yeah. But about sa, sa Viluna, um, kayo po ma'am, nabigyan nung panahon ni President Duterte, di ba, ng for equipment. I remember, nagalit siya noon dahil nga 
matagal ba ang DOH o ano no, sa pagbili, no? Yes. Oh, but, but how are your facilities there? So, mga MRI, CT scan? We, all, we already uh, have those yeah. facilities, sir, and even the hyperbolic chamber. Oh. We are 1,200-bed uh, capacity at tertiary hospital with uh, specialty training. Mm -hmm. So, sir, um, we have enough actually from the, the government. It's only the implementation, and we're doing it better now. And we are receiving a lot of equipment. We also have this ER and R complex, which will be hopefully opened mm -hmm. next year with, uh, with the equipment uh, amounting to one point. So, the main yung talaga, ma'am, yung packages? No? Yes, if the packages. It's not really enough. Uh -huh. And then... So it's not only the problem here because Biluna Medical Center has allocation for for its clients. However, all the AFP personnel and its civilian employees are field health members, mm -hmm. and we are giving PHIC billions of pesos every month. And for for now, if you are receiving eighty thousand as your salary, that's times four percent, sir. So we are giving three thousand two hundred a month. So it's a big money mm -hmm. comparable to. Private insurance already. Yeah. So, so sorry, that last point. So you are giving four percent sa premium. No, sorry, the latest policy. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, mm -hmm. the premium yeah. is four so, percent of the base pay. So the the ano sir tama ba that regardless kung magkano yung binibigay na premium pareho yung package. Yes. So yun ang kaibahan niyo sa private. Kasi sa private kung mas malaki yung premium mas malaki din yung yes yung benefit na no? oh, oh. okay ma'am we'll uh, just so that I don't clutter their presentation muna and then baka yung ibang issues na to I'll talk to Senator Bongo whether he'll take it up sa kanyang uh, committee or mag-join kami no sir uh, sorry so anyone else before we want ano um before we ask uh, the filial to present yung kanilang presentation so kung wala sir please yeah. You don't have to repeat, sir, unless you want to give. Ah, yeah. Yes, ma'am. Uh, your Honorable Chairman, I would like to request recognition for the President of the Philippine Government Employees Association. Wala po po kasi kanina, uh, she is in an equally important meeting and now she is here and would want to say some few statements regarding the situation or of government employees and uh, uh, personally thank you can we recognize her sir yeah yes ma'am please uh, thank you is she online na pa? okay yes sir yeah welcome ma'am hello good uh, good afternoon po uh senator uh na miss namin kayo at least now we are sure that in senate we will be able to uh, see uh, the vigilance of uh, Senator Cayetano. And marami uh, marami salamat that uh, the PGA was invited here. Gusto ko lang pong sigurong ihabol. I know the, my, the legislative team of PGA was able to share inputs. We had the seven point uh, issues. So by then, what we, we just want to uh, impart now is, alam nyo, Senator, sa totoo lang ho, sa dami ng mga meetings, sa uh, Congress, Senado, galing ka naman po sa Congress, alam nyo, gano'n rin katagal umaabot ang mga pag-uusap dito. If you are to ask government employees or the beneficiaries of uh, the Peel Health Program, we we are, and you, you know we we cannot waste time on how we can remedy or how we can address the current issues and problems we are encountering alam nyo, we have uh, said uh, issues about contribution okay it's a burden but of course walang insurance kung walang contribution benefits we have said uh, you know our position there but ang at tanong dito kasi ang pinaka main ano po yung access you access you should we should have enough providers hospitals doctors i mean up to the park lang area hindi pwede kasi ang nakikinabang o ang naaattendahan lang o ang mga napapakinabangalagaan lang eh yun dun nandoon sa urban areas yung rural areas kawawa po and then second yun dun po sa coverage 
uh, maganda naman po ang uh, sa ngayon na nakikita namin na uh, ika nga extent of coverage ng ating mga kasama o ng 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 uh, coverage na sinasakop ng go- peer help para i-cover ito ang citizenry pero alam din ho natin na umaasa lalo na yung mahihirap o yung indigent do sa tinatawag na ika nga kung uh, pag sinabi indigent ka nandoon ka sa charity ward kahit may peer help ka malaking bagay po ang pagkilala na equality sa pagtingin sa mga uh, pasyente, hindi lamang sa pagtingin ng doktor, kundi pagtrato ng ating uh, mga host, hospital. Siguro, kasi kung nasa charity word ka, hindi nga talaga mabibigyan ng ika nga uh, so much attention kasi konti rin ang doktor at nurses na nag attend sa mga charity wards. Unlike in the private rooms, So, uh, pangat-apat po sa fund, I think ang sinabi na aking mga kasamahan dyan ay na-express naman ng maayos. Ang, ang simple lang pong ano, uh, amin sinasabi ay, kung nagbayad ako sa'yo ng piso, I should be getting the equivalent of piso. ba diba? So, uh, if uh, government employees now is sharing about uh, 3,000, no, not one five on the average as they said, but 3,000 something in a month. And that should be equivalent to the so-called, ano, uh, ika nga eh, sa HMO, baka kaya kong ipambili yan na equip ng mas magandang beneficyo. So, PhilHealth should be able, the program or the amendments of the law should provide more flexibility or more uh, concrete measures that will spell out ano yung uh, kapalit ng pera na manggagawa Uh, in contributing field health. For all we know, the money that is intact in field health is owned by the members, by the contributors. It's not, it's not owned by government per se. Once you contribute, government contribute to the, to the benefits of government employee, it becomes, diba ho, in essence, it becomes the, uh, the, the fund of the, the owners, the owner who are the contributors. And the contributors are the members. Government counter share is it diba is uh, I mean equal or ikanga e parang part of the benefit package. So it's a it's a workers uh, ownership. So to 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 I think the law, any amendments in the law should also focus on the uh, the right of ownership to the fund. Um, when uh, If I may say so, that uh, when I was in field health, I was a former field health employee. Sa totoo lang po, uh, I also sit in the board of field health. Marami pong innovation at marami namang studies at researches na pwedeng, i, uh, na, na pwedeng implement. So, baka pwedeng in this uh, amendment of the law, tignan yung lahat ng mga researches in the past that has taken place and uh, hindi nga na-implement o hindi pa na-testing, wala na, baka pwedeng tignan lahat ito at palakasin yung research arm ng uh, field health. And as to, ano lang po, uh, gusto ko lang sabihin, uh, Chairman, uh, Senator Cazano, uh, and Senator Pia, and Senator Bongo, uh, pwede po ba na yung pag-aaral na ito para baguhin ang batas na isang pagkakataon na napakaganda ay maging talagang uh, ika nga eh, hindi ko masir sabi hindi seryoso. Mas focus at mas inclusive. Meaning to say na in the process, all stakeholder will be considered in the process. Hindi yung kinukonsulta ang manggagawa pagkatapos makonsulta din man wala naman hindi man lang dinebate kung bakit hindi pwede yung sinabi ng manggagawa okay na nakonsulta ka naman wag wag po sana ng ganun dapat through the essence of tinatawag na social dialogue o tinatawag na uh, consultation it should be a genuine one so paano mapapangalagaan ng isang manggagawa ang kanyang ownership kung hindi niya naiintindihan and toto lahat na may kinalaman sa kanyang dapat pakinabangan. So, eh, we're now talking about education, awareness. Kailang dagdagan 
at kailangan seryosohin. And then second part is, paano kong papangalagaan ng pondo ko kung hindi ko alam saan dinala, paano nagastos, at uh, may, mayroon mga report. But you know, uh, di, tama si, ano eh, kanina po may nag-input sa akin, sabi niya, uh, tama si, ano, si Senator Cayetano, when he said na everything has to be validated down the ground. Hindi pa pwede na dahil sinabi ng isang government agency, ito ang performance ko, we take it as it is. We should be able to uh, create a venue wherein to, you know, not only ventilate issues, but also to uh, validate. Kasi ho, sa PGA, meron kami uh, dulugan ng bayan wherein people, not only the government employees or the community Bayan, yung pong citizenry ay pwedeng humingi ng uh, tulong kung saan natin i-refer. So, with this, madami hong avenue o sinasabi ko lang vehicle na pwedeng i-concretize at ilagay dito sa batas. Basta, ano lang po talaga, genuine, maliwanag yung genuine participation, genuine ownership, at uh, siguro, Uh, pagbabalik tanaw doon sa mga nakaraan na pag-aaral na pwede naman pakinabangan sa ngayon. Maraming matatalino ngayon. Ngunit, hindi rin natin maiisang tabi ang pag-aaral at uh, ginawa naman ng mga pag-aaral in the past. So, through your uh, ano, uh, tulong, uh, Senator, perhaps all of this will be uh, considered Creating technical working group is okay, but uh, doing a more uh, focus and more, not only participation, but, you know, involvement. Pag sinabi ko kasi na uh, mag-aral kayo, tur- turuan ng government uh, employees o turuan ng member, uh, hindi lang validation ang kailangan kung nangyari yun, kundi itest natin kung talagang naiintindihan yan. Kasi kung hindi, eh hindi po tayo makakakuha ng active participation ng contributors who are the owner of the fund. Marami marami salamat po uli. Alam ko marami pa kayo pag-uusapan. Thank you po. Thank you very much ma'am. Unang-una, well taken po yung consultation should uh, include participation. Ha? Diba? Hindi naman to ano lang yung um, pasintabi. No, but uh, this is we really want to have real participation. That's why I also have to consult Senator Bongo kung gusto niyang uh, i-join uh, yung ibang uh, amendments between the Committee on Health and yung committee natin. But let me assure you, uh, we will take this uh, seriously, focused at saka yung participation. Having said that kasi uh, almost 200 ang ating GOCCs eh. That's why pinaprioritize ko talaga yung may impact talaga sa buhay ng tao. Uh, The weekend nga, daming naglalabi sa akin na i-hearing na rin ang PCSO dun sa nangyaring tumama. Eh, sabi ko, number two pa lang yung... So number one was SSS and GSIS at uh, we just scratched the surface. Today, PhilHealth. Sabi ko, baka ang PCSO, number nine, 18, 27, 36. <laughs> uh, in multiples of nine. Pero pwera, biro, you know... Um, yung sinabi mo ma'am na dapat i-validate on the ground, ang point kasi dito, faith in the system eh, di ba? Pag tingin mo, hindi naman totoo yung pag-ibig, hindi naman totoo yung field health, hindi naman totoo yung SSS, hindi naman totoo yung loto, naluluto, di ba? Pagka ganyan yung attitude ng tao, apektado tayo lahat sa gobyerno. That's why nga ang attitude natin dito, it's not the committee versus field health. Where we're all in this together and kami naman nagpapasa ng budget eh. So kung may pagkukulang, it's not only on your box, it's also on us. But of course, if there's graft and corruption, di ba, um, it's our duty to point it out. So ma'am, if I can summarize uh, right before I give the floor to PhilHealth officials, kasi I wanted to finish around 4, a little bit after 4, para hindi naman kayo matraffic at makareport pa kayo dun sa babalik pa sa opisina. Um, to summarize, sir, sabi niya, access, coverage, Nadagdag ko yung, yung zero, zero balance, uh, zero billing, kasi yung talaga issue. So, gawin natin yung code natin, paano ako A-access si coverage o yung zero billing. I think, you know, we'll be focusing on that eh. 
Ang mga naman, di ba, na kahit na kumpleto at maganda, kung wala namang PhilHealth accredited sa lugar na yan, and some of that will be DOH. As I said, 40% of our barangays do not have primary health centers. No? Yung uh, coverage, uh, yung isa dyan, yung binanggit na kanina nga, yung PhilHealth Plus, at saka yung check-up and everything, but also to zero billing. So anyway, we'll... we'll uh, The floor is yours again, uh, Tony Santos. And then, kung ma-input mo na rin yung narinig mo mga tanong dito. And uh, basically nga, we're interested dun sa zero billing. No? Number one, uh, you know, how, how do you come up with the amount? Is it an average or do you do a survey? And then number two, uh, yun nga, how do we address those issues na kung medyo pasay na yung amount na yun? No? Right now, napakalaki ng inflation. So I don't know sa healthcare cent. I mean, if you ask people about presyo ng bigas, ng langis, masasagot ka kagad. I, I, kayo po magsabi, do you feel this then sa mga laboratories at sa mga ospital? No? Nagtataas na rin ba sila? No? Sir? Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Again, good afternoon, uh, Mr. Chairperson. Honorable Senator Pia Cayetano, Honorable Senator Bongo, hello, public servants. Colleagues, resource persons, everyone, good afternoon. Mr. Chairperson, you might not, this presentation might not be able to cover uh, on target the access, coverage, and zero billing, but we are, we welcome any question about that after the presentation. Please allow us to share PhilHealth's proposed programs and corresponding budget requirements for the next, 20, next year, 2023. And then we'll be updating the committee on the corporation's ongoing initiatives as we gear towards the attainment of universal health care. Next slide, please. Our presentation will cover the following contents. First, revenue generation. Second, membership coverage. Third, expansion of benefits, particularly following the UHC Act, the sustainability of the funds, and strengthening of PhilHealth as an institution. Next slide, please. The two, main, the two main fund sources of PhilHealth are premium collections from direct contributory members and national government subsidies, indirect contributory members. From 2018 to 2022, subsidies have formed around 42% of the funds raised. These subsidies are proposed by PhilHealth as part of its budget. On the average, the average historical allotment of DBM and eventual GAA approved budget is around 49.55% and 50.48% of what PhilHealth proposed, respectively. Next slide, please. So in terms of numbers, sir, ilan dyan yung direct na employees at employee, ilan employees yan? And yung sa national government na subsidy is equal to how many people? Will that be in the presentation later on? Wala. Wala, sir. It's yeah. not so, clear, but we'll answer anyway, that question. Can you answer that later? Para, yes, sir. Para hindi pera ang tinitignan natin. Uh, we're really interested kasi kung ilan ba talaga ang membro at covered ng PhilHealth. Yes, sir. May I proceed, Mr. Chairperson? The UHC Act changed the membership scheme to two simple groups, direct contributory and indirect contributory. As of June 30, 2022, direct contributors are 63 million or 64% of the total PhilHealth members in the database. Indirect contributors are 35 million or 36% of the membership database. By virtue of the UHC Act, Filipinos are automatically members and covered by PhilHealth. The counts mentioned refers to the number of names registered in the database, which is 98 million. From 2023 to 2027, PhilHealth is forecasting expansion of both its premium collections and subsidies received from the national government. The pooled funds from PCSO Core, in accordance with the UHC Act is also seen to, sub to substantially contribute to the fiscal space of PhilHealth. As PhilHealth plans to grow and expand its benefits in the coming years in order to fulfill its envisioned role in the UHC Act, the corporation will also require a commensurate expansion in its fiscal space in order to afford these benefits. 
Simply put, the expected increase in spending will also necessitate increases in financing. Next slide, please. As to GAA utilization, as of June 30, 2022, PhilHealth has already utilized 77% of its GAA allotment. Next slide, please. This is the three-year income statement of PhilHealth. On a three-year average, around 45% of premiums are from the subsidies of indirect contributors. The reserve fund shows an increasing trend with an average of growth rate of 27%. The investments take the largest chunk, averaging 89% of PhilHealth's total assets. The benefit expense of PhilHealth took a dip in 2020 due to COVID-19 impact. As we embrace the new normal with quarantine restrictions relaxed, a significant increase in benefits expense can be observed. As of June 30, 2022, PhilHealth's premium income is $83 billion, a reserve fund of $188 billion, Total assets of 365 billion and benefit expense of 75 billion. The net income of PhilHealth as of June 30, 2022 is 10.1 billion pesos. Despite the challenges arising from the pandemic and global disruptions brought by the war in Ukraine, the National Health Insurance Fund ended the first eight months of the year with a robust investment portfolio level of 336.6 billion, significantly higher than the 333.3 billion investable funds reported in the same period in August last year. The increase was attributed to a higher premium collection. Again, the lion's share of the investment portfolio is invested in government securities, accounting 78% or 270 29 billion of the total portfolio by 16% from 233.69 billion in August 2021. This is followed by special savings or high yielding deposits placed at 75.28 billion, comprising 21.72% of the total investable funds. While the remaining, while the remaining less than 1% of the portfolio of 1.1 billion consists of AAA corporate bonds investments in the Ayala property arm. Ayala Land Incorporated. The special savings deposit level is lower by 14% compared to last year's 87.59 billion, since certain portions of the proceeds from maturing placements were reinvested in days to go government securities. But the corporate bonds investments finished off with a lower balance from 12.01 billion from the previous year's level, seeing that the number of corporate bonds investments matured and were redeemed last year. Also, there were no new investments in corporate bonds pending the finalization of the revised policy on corporate bonds investment. Next slide, please. For 2023. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. I just want to thank the Majority Leader, Senator Joel Vinueva, for making time. Actually, papunta na siyang Bulacan, but nung nalaman niyang feel health, he went back to the Senate. So thank you for that, Senator. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Of course, here to uh, support our uh, dear chairman, brother in Christ, Senator Cayetano, and of course, PhilHealth. We know that uh, you need a lot of support, and uh, we are here to help in any way we can. Uh, marami na tayong mga naririnig na kung ano, especially mga chismis, alam naman natin yun, no? but uh, we are here to help and uh, hopefully uh, makatulong. But I would only say na you're in good hands uh, with uh, Senator Alan Cayetano. That's for sure. Thank you. Walang representative ngayon yung athletes, pero si Senator Joel na yan kasi suki na ang tawag sa kanya dun sa MRI at saka pag-opera sa tuhod sa kaka-basketball. But that's an example because what we're discussing, Senator, is the, yung coverage, yung access, at yung zero billing, di ba? Kung, uh, how do I put it? Kung may tapang ang ordinaring Pilipino sumugod sa ospital, na uuwi siyang ginamot siya at lahat ng treatment na hindi niya kailangan maglabas ng pera. No? Siguro that's the gist of it. Sir, please continue. Sorry for the interruption. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Good afternoon, Honorable Senator Joel Villanueva, sir. For 2023, PhilHealth proposed a total subsidy of $134.75 to cover indirect contributors. This includes 
indigent families and households, senior citizens, persons with disabilities, and other special groups that are mandated by legislation to be subsidized. Following the UHC Act, premium rate of 4.5% for the income floor of 10,000 pesos, this translates to an annual premium rate 5,400 for these subsidized individuals. The DBM approved amount is 79.06 billion, or 58.67% of the original proposal of PhilHealth. PhilHealth also proposed separate additional funding of 34.99 billion to be sourced from the pooling of funds from PCSO Pancor. This is for the improvement of benefit packages following the UHC Act for a grand total proposed of 169.74 billion. The DBM approved amount for benefit package improvement following the UHC Act is 21.17 billion, which is 60.5% of the proposed. This brings the total DBM allotment to 100.23 billion, which is 59.05% of the proposed. Next slide, please. In terms of benefit payout, we see a consistent trend in inpatient payments versus outpatient payments. This is based on a study done by the Philippine Institute for Development Studies, or PIDS, in 2021, which processed and analyzed around 60 million claims data from 2015 to 2020. On the average, 90% of field health benefits are toward inpatient payments. These are more or less equally distributed across levels 1, 2, and 3 hospitals. Infirmaries constitute the smallest share at around 4%. Outpatient payments only constitute around 10% of the benefit payment of PhilHealth in this period. Majority of these are paid for outpatient hemodialysis, benefits for maternity care, and family planning. Both account for around 4% of the 10%. The baseline primary care benefit of PhilHealth only account 0.001%. This, this shows a familiar, familiar trend within the entire health sector where much of the resources and attention go to tertiary care, with the UHT Act payments of inpatient care will be rationalized and improved. Benefits for outpatient care, on the other hand, will be prioritized and expanded. Next slide, please. As you can see, PhilHealth has already processed and paid majority of the received claims in the last three years, where 75% of the received claims in 2022 are already paid and 12% are in process. We'd like to assure the Senate and this committee that there is no cause for alarm. PhilHealth receives an average of 1.2 million claims a month, multiplying this by the average value per claim of a little more than 10,000 pesos. It will give us a total amount of 12.5 billion pesos of claims meant per month. Hence, the value that was raised during the budget hearing with the Committee on Finance it's just about a month's worth of claims on hand. At any point in time, PhilHealth will always have about 10 to 15 billion pesos worth of claims in process. Next slide, please. Currently, the benefit for primary care is through Consulta. Consulta covers a limited select set of 13 laboratory services, 21 medicines, plus consultations, preventive services, and referrals, which with the UHC Act, the vision is to provide a comprehensive outpatient benefit package for all Filipinos, the COBP. The COBP will not be limited in what it will cover. Instead, it will cover and pay for all essential drugs and laboratories within the standard of primary level or outpatient level facility. For inpatient services, the prevailing payment system is through the all case rates or ACR. Through the ACR, Internationally classified and stan standard medical and procedure interventions are assigned a corresponding fixed rate. In effect, all inpatient services are covered. However, these rates have, have been deemed insufficient, as was related to us a while ago by our resource persons. With the UHC Act, the ACR will shift towards diagnosis-related groups. Here, all inpatient medical and procedure interventions will be covered. Furthermore, it will be grouped together for appropriate diagnosis and costed more appropriately. These transitions to UHC and vision benefits will happen through phased implementation, where year-on-year -year growth will be incremental. 
for primary care, the intended approach is that increments of 25% of the population should be covered until the COBP is implemented and everyone transitions out of consulta by year 2027. For inpatient care, the intended approach is that rationalization to DRGs will be done for increments of 25% from top claimed cases until the entire ACR is phased out. Next slide, please. Aside from the shift towards COBP and DRGs, other special benefits are also in the pipeline. This is a mix of expanding current benefits for and introducing new ones. Benefits for certain cancers, hemodialysis, transplants, and select surgeries will be expanded. While new benefits on malnutrition, physical medicine, and rehabilitation, and mental health will be introduced. You can see here also the projections on how much will be the year-on-year -year benefits cost of shifting to COBP and DRGs, as well as establishing these special benefits. These incremental shifts will lead to full maturity for all benefits come 2027. UHC, acts, UHC Act mandates PhilHealth to become a national strategic purchaser of individual-based health goods and services. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. If we, if we follow a scenario where PhilHealth receives what it proposes throughout, benefit expense will overtake income by 2026, where the yellow bar exceeds the green bar. This means that the same 2025 benefit level will continue to be implemented as represented by the red bar. Here, 75% of Filipinos can receive the comprehensive outpatient benefit package. For inpatient, the ACR will continue to be implemented. For special benefits, the benefits for malnutrition will continue. But the benefits for hemodialysis and mental health will be maintained. In the ideal scenario that PhilHealth receives what it proposed until 2027, it will be able to reach the maximum benefit level of 2027. And the reserve funds will have to be tapped as represented by the blue bar. The financial health of PhilHealth will still be intact. Reaching this full maturity in benefit levels means that all Filipinos can be provided, the COBP, the DRGs will be fully implemented, and all enhancements in the special benefits will likewise be completed. Overall, PhilHealth will continue to develop its benefits in accordance with the UHC. However, the continuing expansion towards and rollout of these benefits will also depend on the resources of PhilHealth. The National Health Insurance Program will continue. The more resources we have, the more benefits we can also put out. Next slide, please. In order to better perform our mandate, PhilHealth will also be strengthening its institutional capacity. In 2022, some of these have already been initiated, but are expected for continuing implementation this 2023. These institutional strengthening activities will also necessitate resources to implement. For this coming 2023, we propose continuing the additional 2.5% covered administrative cost for a total of 7.5% 7, 7 as allowed by law. The 5% administrative cost rate will total to about around 8.6 billion. This should be able to cover the PS and MOE costs. Sorry. The additional 2.5% will translate to additional 4.3 billion. No. 523 million of this is targeted for improvements in the office, its logistics, core operations such as collections, and externalization activities such as information and education campaigns for UHC. The compensation and position classification system, or the CPCS of the GOCC, or the GCG, will also be continuously implemented, which introduces salary adjustments based on EO 150. The 2.5 billion will be for the ongoing reorganization of the structure of PhilHealth. Once completed, this aims to revitalize the different units, staffing patterns, as well as work dynamics of the corporation to respond better to each UHC mandates. The 211 million will be for digitization and IT enhancements, which are also major areas of institutional strengthening. For detection,
Hi. Hello. Yeah, sir. Mukhang okay na yung sound system. Why don't you finish the, ano, but then we'll go into that, ha, yung membership. Sundin natin yung, ano, yung uh, coverage, tapos yung access, tapos zero billing. Just, just very, ano. Sige, sir, para you can finish the presentation. Sige, sir, kung... Okay. Kung papayagan nyo habang wala lang yung screen, okay, pwede ba natin himayin yung, ano nga, yung membership? Yes, May binabanggit kayo kaninang 65 million and 35 million. Is, was that it? So, 65 million paying premiums? Ganun ba yan? If you're maybe sir, your person, yeah. as of August 2022, the direct contributors has a total of 34 0.6 million. So, 34.6 million people are paying. That's correct, okay. Mr. Chairperson. Tapos yung indirect, ito yung sa Sinta, ito yung mga subsidies. That's correct, Mr. So, Chairperson. So, ilan yan? 21.7 million, Mr. Chairperson. 21. That's correct. So, if you add both, it's around... Uh, 56.4 million. Ilan pa? 56. For okay, million. so for 56 million, and if we're 110 million Filipinos, assuming 10 million are abroad, so around 44 million in the Philippines are not uh, are not contributing muna. Tama? If I may, Mr. Chairperson, yes. oh. with that membership, we also have dependents numbering to about 43.7 million. Oh, so kung sama mo yung dependents na 43 uh, million, uh, that, that's what I was saying kanina, na yung iba, it's yung individual ang member, pero may dependents siya, so per family. Yes, sir. So dapat lumabas na 100%. That's correct. Yeah. Let, let me, ano, sir, ha? Um, sa, sa pananaw nyo, how many do you think sa Pilipino tingin nila, alam nila kung na member sila? It's not your fault, ha? kasi panahon pa ni President Era, President GMA, parati 90% members, 85-95. Pero can you make a guess or a guesstimate uh, uh, if you were to go around ngayon, anong tingin yung tingin ng tao? Ilan sa kala ang membro? Uh, yes, sir. Mr. Chairperson, my answer will still be based on the number. And that is the registration rate of 90%. And uh, that means 111.5 million Filipinos are, uh, I'm sorry, 101 million yes. Filipinos are registered. Percent pata, sir. Yeah. Can you show the OCTA slide? So, I mean, that's an intelligent answer and that's by the statistics. Pero ito yung sinasabi kong validation on the ground, no? To, to use the word ng PGEA, ano. Uh, pinasama ko to sa OCTA as a rider question uh, nung 20... 21, okay? Only 43% of Filipinos say that they are members. 60% in Metro Manila, napakababa sa balance of Luzon, 22%. Sa Visayas, 38%. Sa Mindanao, 61%. I'd encourage you or the DOH sa susunod na SWS of Pulse Asia, isabay nyo rin. Kasi total data-driven naman kayo and science-based. Kasi kahit anong sabihin natin sa tao 100%, kung sila mismo magsasabing hindi sila member. So it goes to my next question. 100% naman pala ng Pilipino ay membro, why would they need an ID? Diba? Eh, 100% naman pala eh. Di pagpunta nila, kasi pagpunta mo, hinahanapang ka pa eh ng PhilHealth eh. Oh, go ahead, sir. Mr. Chairperson, for purposes of availment of PhilHealth benefits, we do not require ID. Right now, at present, Mr. Chairperson, please. Oh, when you go to the hospital, hanap ang ka, tatanungin ka, feel health member ka ba, di ba? Tatanungin ka. Ba't ka pa tatanungin kung lahat naman kayo membro? Right. <laughs> so, maraming Pilipino, pagpunta ng hospital, tinatanong, sir, may feel health ka ba? And based on the survey, 57% will say, sir, hindi ako membro. Di ba? Oo. Oh. Yes, uh, Mr. Chairperson, if I may, 
uh, although we have this automatic or immediate eligibility, but what PhilHealth requires is registration. Uh, we uh, mandate, we request our fellow Filipinos to register in PhilHealth, uh, Mr. Chairperson, because at present, our registration rate is still 90%, meaning there is about 10 to 12 million Filipinos. Or not I, I want to finish this hearing without arguing with you. Yes, sir. So, kuputunin ko dito, and please meet about it, kasi precisely nga, kung sila mismo nagsasabing hindi sila membro, I mean, I won't argue about registered or hindi, di ba? But ang point nga, and remember kami, dumadaan kami sa eleksyon. And in, in 2019, nung tumatakbo akong congressman ulit, skokus yan eh. So pag sinabi sa amin ng Bureau of, uh, yung, yung sa statistics ng labor, na only 7% or 6% walang trabaho, eh umaga, uh, almusalan, tanghalian, merienda, hapon, may kausap akong tao eh. So kung may trabaho sila, wala sila doon. <laughs> Di ba? Kaya pag tinanong ko, sino dito walang trabaho? Lahat ng kaharap ko eh. So, more than 7% ng population yon Unless taga-tagig lang ang walang trabaho. So, ganun din ang tinanong ko sa kanila. Pag tinanong ko sa kanila, sino sa inyo walang feel health? Napakaraming tatanong. So, again, sir, I, I know you're answering correctly in terms of your statistics. But I'm saying in terms of practical terms, it has to be much easier, di ba? Na pag pumunta ka, so kung all Filipinos are covered, how do we make it easier doon? Iba biometrics na lang ba natin yan or whatever? You can answer now or hindi, but ang point ko lang, I don't want to argue kasi so that we can go on to two more points, no? But uh, we have to have a better way of them. Sir, sir you want to say something? Go ahead po. Yeah. CEO. Yeah. CEO. Sir, we... Thank you for that, sir. And we, ano talaga, sir, we acknowledge that there are a lot of people na nagsasabi wala akong feel health. Kahit sinasabi na sa universal healthcare, na meron siya. So I think that is a challenge, sir, and we will uh, answer that by intensifying our educational campaign. Yes. But dun sa availment lang, sir. But pakitignan nyo rin kasi how can they be registered kung hindi nila alam? Unless yung nag-register yung magulang at hindi alam ng mga yes, beneficiaries. Sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. We will do that, sir. In fact, uh, we have... Uh, we are embarking on projects with DepEd and paano ba namin ma-register na mapasok. Pero ang, ang ano talaga, sir, crux of the matter is when they need feel health, which is on the point of service doon sa hospitals, kailangan nila doon ma ma maka-avail. So, and we acknowledge also... And I acknowledge that at napagandang invasion yan. But on the ground, alam nilang kung ang tingin nila wala silang feel health, hindi na sila pupunta sa point of ano. Yes, sir. So, so marami pa rin na mamatay ngayon na hindi tumutuloy sa ospital kasi hindi nila alam na sasagutin sila nun. Opo. We acknowledge that, sir, and we will intensify our educational campaign. But we would like also to let you know na doon sa, sa hospital, sir, naglagay tayo ng portal wherein the hospital personnel can check if they are in the database. Now, if wala sila sa database, they will just have to uh, fill out our yeah. form for purposes naman of for the hospital to claim. Uh, alam mo, sir, if I can recommend, wala pong barangay captain sa buong Pilipinas ang hindi gusto na lahat ng kanyang kababayan ay registered. So maybe if you meet with yung samahan, total in extent naman natin term nila ng one year, uh, I think if ganun ka grassroot, of course, uh, mayors, governors, napaka-importante, but I, I think ang una naman tinatakbuhan talaga nung may sakit yung barangay. So if we do something with them dito sa registration or we do it online or whatever, no? So thank you for that answer, but yun ang point ko, ha? ayoko lang na... I, so it's the 19th Congress, Brad, no? So since 11th Congress, kasi tanong ko yun, eh. But I'm happy that finally I got a, a answer na napupunta na tayo sa solusyon. So which goes to the second question. So assuming that they're all members or all they have to do is to register, um, dun sa zero billing, how do you get the price of the, ano, the, the package? Do you do a survey or anong? Mr. So Chairman, can I, ano, but in, because it, this is related to what you're trying to uh, uh, emphasize. First of all, I'd like to... Uh, uh, associate myself to what you mentioned. And with this uh, data that you presented, that 43% of our uh, people believe that 
they are a member of PhilHealth. So 57% are, are, are not. Binabanggit nyo kanina, pag pumunta dun sa ospital, tatanungin kung PhilHealth member ba sila o hindi. And then kung member ka, isisingit ko lang yung uh, World Health Organization's Global Health Expenditure uh, database. Ang sabi dito, yung out-of-pocket expenditure as of uh, uh, 2019 here in the Philippines is uh, very high. No? Yung huling record nila, Mr. Chairman, is, it, it, it's a 48.56%. And ganina, binabanggit nyo nga po yung... It, it's, it's, it's funny because I, I, I had three knee major surgeries, Mr. Chairman. Suki ako talaga. At uh, inabil ko yung buy one, take one na uh, operasyon sa tuhod. But yung percentage, yung percentage of uh, the major sources of... Uh, uh, financing accounts for out-of-pocket uh, expenses. So I think it's very uh, important that we we also discuss it, um, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Last point before we leave there. Diba yung latest ruling is that OFWs do not have to get till health. Tama po ba yan? Diba? Uh, so ibang issue if they should or not. No, But kung ang stand na ngayon or ang utos na is they do not have to, but 100%, so now they're still members. It's just that they don't pay. Diba? So burden din sa inyo yun. Oh. Oh. They have to. Oh. Yeah. Pero hindi nila alam na membro din sila. Or yung, yung... Actually, ang angal naman kasi ng OFWs, hindi yung beneficiaries nila, yung sila. Na ba't sila magbabayad kung nasa abroad sila? Kasi sa abroad, magbabayad din sila ng health insurance doon. But ang beneficiaries nila ang pamilya nila nandito. So yun ang hindi na so sort out. Maybe I can sponsor a meeting between PhilHealth and uh, Secretary Toots Ople para we can map out how to really uh, help no, yung OFWs. No? So can we go there to nga yung sabi nga ni Senator Villanueva, yung actual na out of uh, pocket. So how do we do the yung, ano, yung, yung bayarin? No? So for example, sa dialysis or sa uh, bypass, no? How, how do you get the amount sa package? Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, uh, we have uh, two packages or um, for the inpatient. One is uh, we are using the ACR or the all case rates. And then we also have the Z-benefit package, um, which is actually covers the catastrophic Catastrophic illness. Uh, these are diseases which are economically and uh, medically catastrophic to the patient. So um, the usual, uh, the current benefit for ACR or the all case rates, these were computed based on the uh, procedure or condition average cost. Uh, ang problem po natin dito is that these were um, costed uh, in the year... Uh, 2013 and 2014. Um, that's why you were you, there. There was an um, manifestation earlier that it is um, too low because, uh, like the 22,000 mentioned earlier on the Sarian section, this uh, this is under all case rates. Um, what we want to do here is uh, we are currently updating the costing for this uh, cost case rates. And also for the... To clarify lang ha. So good news yun that you're updating and I think you should do it, what, every year or every two years, di ba? Uh, having said that, sinabing average, that's per region, that's private public hospital or how do you get the cost? Um, so, so assuming this was 2013, 2014 and we were doing it, uh, how do we get it? For the original, it was a national average. National average. Yes. And um, we know for a fact that uh, then we will have a problem yes. in urban areas kasi yes. mas mahal talaga. Mm -hmm. And then yung problema mo sa rural, mas mura nga, pero baka wala yung facility doon. So when you're doing it now, could you do it per region? Yes, sir. Diba? Kasi I don't think it makes sense to do it on a national Yeah. Yes, sir. If yeah. if I may complete also, sir, uh, with regards to the um, ACR, we are actually uh, transitioning to uh, as as um, mandated in the law uh, to a uh, DRG or diagnosis related groupings. We're in uh, for this one, sir. Uh, we will have also to consider not only the 
uh, the location of the patient or the hospital, but also we also take into account the other factors that um, uh, cause or hazard effect on the uh, actual cost of care, which are the age of the patient, um, uh, for in kung mas matanda po siya, mas risky siya, so it uh, actually costs more to care for that patient. Yeah, to be fair naman, yung pinakita natin kanina sa bypass, nakalagay naman doon no complication, di ba? Mm -hmm. So kung alibawa diabetic yung magpapa-opera, alam naman natin na there could be extra expenses. But my point, ma'am, is that when we said, because if you did not say zero billing, then of course it's just a matter of how much you can afford and then those who are lobbying na hindi ba pwedeng itaas. But nung sinabi kasi nating zero billing, naniwala yung tao na wala ka nang idadagdag. Mm -hmm. So how do we reconcile that moving forward? So assuming you're doing now a survey, that will affect the whole presentation kanina. Mm -hmm. Kasi tataas yung cost nyo eh. Mm -hmm. So, will you roll back on services or you will now say na 80-20 uh, yung billing? You'll take care of 80-20 or, or it depends sa lalabas sa inyo? I mean, anyone can answer it, but just so that we know what to expect. Kasi if 2013-2014 yan, I, at least 20% more expensive now. So if you're going to pay another 20%, that's going to affect all of your computations talaga. Di ba? I mean, even without the additional benefits. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, I don't mean to put the whole world on your shoulder, but I think yun yung natural consequence. Nun, eh. um, with the inpatient, sir, uh, and uh, con uh, moving forward, uh, DRG, sir, or the diagnosis-related groupings, we are currently conducting the costing of all the services. And... Um, as soon as we know the actual cost of care, the current actual cost of care, care sir, uh, then we will have to uh, set the base rates for, for all these conditions. And, um, and then po, uh, we will, as I've mentioned, uh, consider all the modifiers for the case. Uh, and um, with that, po, sir, uh, we will, of course, um, consider and the uh, actuarial uh, the financial uh, condition of ill health, uh, and uh, do we after the actual study, um, we will know how much ill health can actually pay for the total cost of care, uh, or what is the percentage that we can uh, take care of, uh, and uh, of course the rest will be for for the patient, uh, and of course, sir, we will have to consider also. Um, discussing this with the uh, uh, healthcare providers and agreeing with them uh, because what we want is that there, if ever um, we need to or we cannot cover everything 100%, the copayment should be fixed and that the patient would not be charged over and above that copayment rate. So, sa akin lang naman truth in advertising and wala naman administration ang gusto na marinig natin na during your time biglang hindi na zero billing no, just thinking ahead but having said that, hindi ba mas pangit na walang faith ang tao na totoo yung zero billing so the thing is, you only have about 35 days more or less or a month and a half before we wrap up the budget so your presentation today, uh, Tony Santos was uh, correct as of today. But as soon as you get the new numbers, uh, para na yung domino na isa-isa nang tutumba kasi magbabago na yan. Diba? As I said nga, eh, if you look at 15 to 25 percent change sa cost, and napaka-obvious naman yan kasi nga napakatagal. And yung cesarean is an example, no? yung 22,000 um, is such a small amount sa act na ginagastos and I think ang gold standard sa atin would still be heart center pagdating sa bypass and kung ang package natin is 550 pero sa kanila ang pinakamura ay 700,000 na so more or less tama diba that's about 20, 20 a little bit over 20% no so I don't wanna create more problems today we're here to find solutions but uh, may I leave that with you 
will have to explain both to the president and to the public that ito nga yung problema ng zero healing. Kasi if we keep advertising it, mag-feel health kayo, mamalik kayo, zero. Tapos they keep going to the 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 hospital at meron silang ilalabas, di ba? Na-erode yung faith sa sistema at sa gobyerno eh. It's not your fault. You got here, that's happening. You're trying to fix it, di ba? But part of fixing it is telling the people the truth. Na ito ang sitwasyon ngayon, di ba? Zero billing but based on 2013 uh, rates, di ba? So anyway, I'll, I'll stop there. Yeah, I, 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 I just wanted to make sure that the numbers ay nag-improve na from the WHO's uh, Global Health Expenditure uh, report na 48.56% yung out-of-the-pocket uh, expenditure as of 2019. Siguro naman to, uh, nababa na natin to ng konti, no? Uh, just wanted to make sure na hindi ito prevailing pa rin because this is 2019. So, so while you're checking that, can I ask the question, anong time frame natin for the for this? Anong time frame natin ma'am for looking at the the the, chain, the reforms, no? And coming out with the cost per package and everything. Sir, yung pinakamatagal na, of course. Kung matapos bukas, bakit hindi? But is it six months, a year, or this year? or? Ano? So, so we have um, about Uh, the remaining months of this year and uh, next year to finally come up with the uh, rates um, for all of this and uh, uh, of course the other necessary implementation arrangements. Um, so we plan to uh, pilot this by 2024, sir. And of course, by piloting, we, we mean uh, since this is a new system, we want to know first how it will run and uh, learn from it and if there are things that we need to change, um, you can change it further. We understand that hindi kayo pwedeng bara-bara dyan. And as I said, no, parang dominos yan na nakapila. So having said that, then wouldn't it be smart or could you bring it up sa board nyo? Why don't you do something across the board now? Diba? Like a 10% or a 15% increase while you're waiting to 2024 para lumapit kayo sa actual para magbago na rin yung computation so that we can go to DBM. Rather than everyone complaining about you in 2023, I mean you not personally, but feel help, no. So th think about that. We have time. We'll we'll have a budget hearing on the floor in November. Uh, but I'll go back to the question of Senator Villanueva, our Majority Leader. The out of pocket uh, expenses of our kababayan natin is it getting better or ano? If I may, Mr. Chairperson, Honorable Senator Villanueva, uh, based on our records, on a study conducted in 2019, the out-of-pocket uh, percentage is 34%, meaning for every 1 peso on health spending, the out-of-pocket is 34%. Cent. 10% yung naibaba, no? Yes, sir. Uh, and uh, I hope we have uh, the mechanisms uh, and... Uh, Steps are being undertaken to uh, address these high out-of-pocket uh, expenses, no, and to lower the uh, uh, within acceptable limits. Of course, uh, yun lang yun sa atin. But to further his question, yung out-of-pocket na yan lumiit uh, because mayayaman ang nagbabayad or ang mahirap ba hindi pa rin? Yeah. Mr. Chairperson, so it's safe to say na across the board yon, yes, because most of our people are poor. Eh. So pag sinabi natin na around 400 billion ang out of pocket, that's totally okay if the rich will do it and they will pay for it because we don't intend naman na pasagutin sa gobyerno yung sa kanila. But if you say 70% of our people are poor at 400 billion, the 70% of that, 280 billion ang out of pocket ng mahirap. Yeah. Di ba? Hmm. For me, Mr. Chairperson, just to be balanced about the reporting, there's a there's also a report from the PSA Philippine National Health Accounts. Our out of pocket is still at 44.7 percent based on the current health expenditure, Mr. Chairperson. 
Honorable Senator Joe. Ano, yung, sir? Yung, uh, hanapan natin yung kasi magkaiba yung kumuha. But ang point ko kasi, yung study na lumabas before na, let's say, again, going to yung, uh, yung alibawa, yung uh, bypass, no? So yung mahirap, na wala siyang extra 150,000 para mabuo yung 700,000, minsan namamatay na nang hindi nagpapabypass. Yung mayaman, kahit yung 1 million na bypass, kukunin niya, i-charge niya sa gobyerno yung 550, 450 yung babayaran niya. And it is right na i-charge sa gobyerno kasi member siya ng uh, PhilHealth at nagbabayad naman siya ng 4%. So progressive din naman yung yung nanggagaling sa kanya na premium at sa employer niya. No? But ang point ko, kaya mas maraming middle class, upper middle class at mayaman ang gumagamit ng PhilHealth kaso sa mahirap. Ito yung net effect ng zero billing na hindi kasi kaya. Di ba? That's what we have to address with the prices and the zero uh, billing. No? So, so yan, so that we can come up with some solutions. Maybe you can discuss with your board kung dapat may across the board na adjustment and then bring it up din sa budget kasi dininay kayo ng instead of giving you for 24 million people for 21 million people ang binigay ng ng DBM sa inyo pero kung ma-update naman sila that it's based on the 2013 2014 kasi nga for example ang DOH they have a 20, 20 billion for MAIP which is a medical assistance program kung zero billing tayo hindi natin kailangan yon bakit? Kasi walang manghihingi sa DOH ng pending additional kasi pagpunta nila may field health. Kaya meron doon at kaya meron sa DSWD, sa AX at kaya meron pumipila sa atin kasi precisely nga, hindi zero yung billing nila. Di ba? Oh. Sir Chair? Yes. If I may add lang po, um, based on the presentation earlier, ah, uh, Kasama po dun sa benefits for expansion is the on the um, ACR, uh, wherein we we were asking for um, about nine billion, sir. This is um, for the increase of the current ACR that will be implemented next year. So that is before even before we go to DRGs, uh, there's already an ano, interim increase in the benefits. And, and the costing that you are using is not the 2013-2014 cost. No, no, sir. Cost. It's okay. a different. <laughs> No. Precisely, ma'am, yung sinabi ko nung umpisa, no, na, ano, or majority leader, yung, pag sinabi mo kasing yung life is only until 26, 26, 27, syempre nagpapanik. Pag hindi mo man sinabing ganun, hindi naman dadagdagan ng pondo. So, very toxic yung atmosphere eh, ng communication eh. No one's listening to each other minsan. So, I do agree, it's very difficult. Pag sinabi nyong wala ng zero billing, uupakan pati yung administrasyon. Pag sinabi naman natin meron, pero pagpunta mo sa ospital, 20-30% babayaran mo, doon namang klaseng yan. So, we, we, nandun tayo sa ganun na uh, sitwasyon eh. Da dahil karap ko rin si General Rodriguez, I, I remember sir, naging problema ng isang ano namin yun, uh, chief of police, nag-iba yung ano, yung, there was one year na nag-iba yung paano i-report yung crimes eh. So sabi niya, sir, kung i-report ko yung tama, ilalabas eh, during my term, dumobli yung crime. Pag hindi naman sumunod ako, sir, nalim naman ako kung hindi ko na-report, so anong gagawin ko? <laughs> diba? Parang damned if you do, damned if you don't. Because nga, there was a reason for for doing that. That's why din tayo nag hearing now that I heard na 2013, 2014, di ba? So klaro naman na that the intent was really for zero billing. Ang problema na paglipasan din lang tayo ng panahon, plus we learn from experience that if you do a national average, babaksak talaga ang presyo sa sa in some places like urban dahil mas mahal talaga di ba yung uh, for 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 many many uh, reasons no so sir ito naman yung present mo rin sa ano no sa budget so that i, I won't let you continue na if that's okay with you to tell it's on the record and most of us viewed it naman but i'll insert it into the record na no? yung presentation niya unless there's some parts that you still want to highlight uh, i'll give you a few minutes Ahead, Mr. Chairperson, if I may, uh, there was uh, an issue raised earlier by our, our resource persons on the 
Philhal Plus may I just be allowed to finish the presentation. Sir, Philhal Plus at saka yung ano ba yung konsulta? Is this precisely yung primary care, diba? So yung checkups dun papasok. No? Oh. Mr. Chairman, I, I'm sorry, uh, Attorney Santos, not to interrupt. Uh, I came here because I love my brother. <laughs> He's a brother in Christ, but I'm also a son, and I have to go to Bulacan and come back here again. And I'm sure our chairman would understand uh, the importance of uh, where I'm going right now. But I just want to put on record that uh, I also have some questions, and uh, I shared the concern of our uh, chairperson when I actually heard that uh, statement uh, made by our OIC and the uh, CEO dun sa House uh, Committee Appropriations that unless a massive uh, uh, infusion of government subsidy is done, a fund life of field health can only last until 2027. Uh, and I'm sure mahaba yung sinabi niya, pero yun lang yung sa inyo, no? Kaya gusto ko sanang maliwanagan dun, but uh, perhaps if you could just uh, uh, furnish us a copy na... Kasi kanina yung I, I catch up with, with some of your presentation uh, that there's no cost uh, of alarm. And at the same time, syempre yung sa updates on the payment of uh, COVID-19 uh, related claims. Alam nyo yung uh, uh, data natin kasi ito yung of the total amount, 15.8 billion or 75% accounted for inpatient. Tapos 4.8 billion or 22% for testing. 617.6 million or 3% for isolation. So, kung titignan natin, about 95% of the claims uh, count are for testing. And then 4% for inpatient and 1% for isolation. So, yun sana gusto kong uh, malaman. And, but uh, for lack of time, kung siguro pwedeng bigyan na lang tayong submit na lang kung uh, ano yung uh, uh, efforts natin dito because uh, again may, may data rin po ako from January 1 to June 30 of 2022 there have been a total uh, of 2 billion 11 million 664 uh, na covid related claims 2 million sorry 2 million 11664 na related claims amounting to 21.16 billion so gusto ko lang maintindihan niyan Mr. Chairman I uh, Sorry, I'm sorry that uh, on I that, on that you... point, uh, Majority Leader, because maganda din yung mga input ng uh, iba't ibang grupo. So the staff will put together yung points ninyo, and anyone who wants, they will distribute it, and anyone who wants to submit a position paper uh, so that we can see which uh, technical working groups have to get uh, moving, and which ones are issues we have to do with the Committee on Health, and which ones are issues na amendments sa batas mo that we can do ourselves. No? And maybe we can furnish Senator Joel with, your, with the data he wants. Uh, para before the budget hearing then, kung may discussion, mapag-usapan na. Yeah, just but to I'll put that on record, the... uh, Mr. Chairman, because that's the reason why we are here and uh, there are issues that we need to tackle uh, uh, with the time frame because we're tackling the budget uh, by by in the next two, three weeks, we'll tackle the budget on the floor. Siyempre, kung may mga kailangan, and then sa legislation, ano man yung uh, kailangan, uh, gaya nung sinabi ko when I first uh, started talking here, I'm here to support our chair and, and feel health in any way we can because uh, yung success ng feel health is success nating lahat. So maraming salamat, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for our for all our research persons. Thank you Thank for you. the physical attendance, uh, brother. Sir, so pwede mong uh, wrap up with, your, with the the ones you want to emphasize now. If I may, Mr. Chairperson, uh, the slide, based on the slide, pursuant to Section 11 of RA 11223 of the UHC Act, Field Health Shell Fund for optional supplemental benefits that are subject to additional contributions and manage the supplemental benefits fund to the minimum required to ensure that the supplemental benefit payments are secured. Executive Order 150 also mandates that PhilHealth shall implement a premium-based insurance for all GOCCs. So this will be the PhilHealth Plus. PhilHealth Plus, next slide, please. PhilHealth Plus is defined as supplemental health coverage to government employees on top of PhilHealth benefits to cover for services and medicines that are not currently covered in standard PhilHealth packages. With the key features, group health insurance, additional coverage for inpatient and outpatient services, premium-based with employer counterpart or fully subsidized by employer. 
Service coverage will include hospitalization for illnesses, to cover for fees on top of field health inpatient benefits and outpatient benefits to include specialist consultations, teleconsultations, diagnostics, and outpatient drug coverage for cases not covered by field health consulta. Implementation will be available for government employees to fill up lost benefits of government employees as per EO 150. The present slide, Mr. Chairperson, show, shows the proposed bills filed in, in, in before this honorable uh, Senate, and we will be submitting our position for each bill. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairperson, honorable senators. Good afternoon. Thank you for that, and I think we had a productive afternoon, kahit na, you know, we just laying out yung ating pong mga definition at saka yung mga priorities. Can I end the hearing with just clarification? Dito sa Republic Act 11223, uh, entitlement of benefits, di ba? Every member shall be graduated. Granted immediate eligibility for health benefit package, Section 9 to, no, under the program, provided that field health card shall not be required in any availment of any health services. Ito yung binabanggit nyo kanina. No? Provided further that no co-payment shall be charged for services rendered in basic or ward accommodation. What does that mean? What is basic or ward accommodation? Mr. Chairperson, that means uh, that uh, basic accommodations, uh, meaning uh, no no other uh, amenities like uh, we usually find in the private rooms like refrigerator, aircon, uh, TV. It just simply means basic accommodation, Mr. Chairperson. And uh, may I request our... Uh, SBP Doklem uh, Bautista to add to that, Mr. Chair, person, please. Yeah, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, yun nga po, ang kasama po dun talaga sa basic accommodation um, is just the, there's a specific room um, uh, conditions like walang aircon, uh, we have beds, um, and uh, health services are being Provide the basic health services are being provided, but directive the no payment is directed to field health or directed to the patient hospital. Uh, the hospital. So, so meaning alibawa nga no, may emergency buntis, dumating nga siya don nilagay sa ward, uh, sabi sa charity. Pero sinabi kailangan talaga cesarian. Kung hindi, may endanger yung life ng bata at saka nung ina. Oh, pero ang cesarean sa kanila ay 75,000. So will she be asked to pay above 22,000? Or kasama na siya dito? Um, actually, sir, that's the something that we want to be also clarified uh, as to the intention of the law. Yeah. Um, because um, for the health finance policy sector in PhilHealth, um, when we speak of um, no co-payment uh, or co-payment in particular, this refers to the payment of or what is to be uh, paid for or out of pocket of the member. And uh, the, the, pro the question there is um, on the no co-payment policy, um, whether whatever is the excess bill of the patient, should it be shouldered by the hospital or should it be shouldered by the PhilHealth? So um, I think that's the... Uh, yeah, so let's do it together. Let's clarify it because of course my financial implication to. But in the end, ang gusto kasi natin, di ba, pag emergency cases, hindi na talag nag-iisip kung paano magbayad. Parang saka na natin i-figure out. Kasi gusto natin, uh, they, they take care of it. But so na naka-experience na ako. But this was years ago, about maybe 10, 12 years ago, na tinawagan na ako ng kaibigan ko, pwede mo ba akong tulungan? Nasa ospital ako, may nasagasaan ako sa C5. Sabi niya, matanda. Ang sabi pa niya, uh, it turned out that he was so stressed na nakasaga sa bata yung nasagasaan niya, hindi matanda. But, ayaw ipa-X-ray at ipa-MRI nung isitis ka nung doktor. Kasi sabi ng doktor, hindi emergency yan. Ano yan? Diagnostic. So, nakipag-argue pa ako na 
Eh, paano mo malalaman kung life-threatening unless i-diagnose mo? Di ba? So, but this was years ago. I mean, so many, more than a decade ago, many things have changed. Um, and, you know, feel health has improved so much. But these are the things we have to clarify. Kasi precisely, and I want to end on this note, no? na can we all agree na ang vision naman natin as a country, as a people, no, following the biblical phrase nga or whatever we believe in our spiritual belief na malin mo Diyos, malin mo tao, na dapat si Juan de la Cruz, si Juana de la Cruz, pag nagkasakit, hindi matakot pumunta ng doktor o sa ospital dahil sa gastos. Yeah. Definitely may gastos, may, may problema dyan. Pero hindi dapat siya mapigilan from going. And really, sa grassroots hanggang ngayon, hindi nawawala yung ganun. Na, sir, gastos lang yan, sir. Mapapalaki problema pa uh, kami dyan. No? So I, I want to end that, that note no? and you know, to agree lang at least on the vision so that as we work together, and again nga, I will consult uh, Senator P and Senator Bongo because nga, eto talaga ang kanilang pasok na tayo dun sa laman nung, nung uh, functions nyo more than just the law. No? But if there are any other provisions that you want nga to na magtulungan tayo mag-clarify, no? Let, let's clarify that. But I think it's very important that together with the public and private hospitals, klaro nga sa Pilipino na pag may sakit ka, at lalo kung agaw buhay na, na mag-isip muna kung sino magbabayad, sumugod ka na sa ospital, di ba? Hmm. So thank you very much, ladies and uh, gentlemen, and uh, it's been a productive afternoon. We hope to, you know, find the time to na isunod-sunod at uh, ayusin lahat ng problema dito. Thank you, and we wish you the best sa bagong yung uh, mahirap na assignment.